Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the premier Halo Championship League. My name is One of Us, and I am joined tonight by a wonderful cast of characters. Right above me, we have the man with probably the second coolest shirt on the lobby tonight, uh, Mr. Invincible. What is up? Man, thank you guys so much for having me back, man. Super excited. Awesome matchup tonight. And yeah, I can't wait to get this underway, man. Hell yeah. And to his right, we have one of our fearless leaders rocking the sick, sick polo there, the PHCL polo, Mr. Tonzi. Hey guys, what's up? I'm honored to be told that I have a cooler shirt on than Invincible, but I don't know how truthful that is. I think there's a little PHCL <laughs> bias there, but I will take it because I'm excited to be here. It is championship night and it is going to be a fantastic time. 100% and below him we have Zip the Zip Meister Mr. Z Zippy Zip Hey how's it going uh super super stoked as well this is going to be a great uh, great great matchup and I'd just like to t touch on the fact uh Tonzi did you did you like mean to make the you know the Pittsburgh hat match for the PHCL you know what I mean like is the P for premier No no the, so this is the Puma hat this is my golf hat oh, and okay. so uh, I also, I got two. So, you know, I was like, you know, because people hit me with those hat swaps. So I was like, I got to make sure I got one for every time I get hat swapped. And I just go back and forth between the two. But yeah, you know, you got to make sure you have stuff to complete the whole outfit. Um, you know, you got the most exciting introduction out of all of us. So I have to be <laughs> exciting. I have to be exciting with the with the outfit a little bit. You know what I'm saying? So I, get, yeah, I 100% understand it. I understand it. the PHCL flashy, the drip, right? The drippy. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. Clothing talk, notwithstanding, we are here for some championship action. It is the finals for the championship division here in the PHCL. We have reality check versus clear enemy. Donzi, why don't you uh? Run us through a little bit of what we can expect for this evening. Well, this evening is the finals. It is money on the line. It is the the culmination of all the hard work that both of these teams have been putting in all season long. It is what they, I mean, it's what they're after. And it's their time to get what they've worked for. And both of these teams worked really hard to get here. I mean, you're talking about Clear Enemy coming back from a 3-0 deficit in their semifinals, doing the reverse sweep, taking it 4-3, and really causing an upset, I think. I think a lot of people saw Infinite Ducks going to the finals, and I'd love to see them build off of it and make sure that they finish what they started there in the semifinals. Because it's one thing to get here, it's another thing to finish it off. And then you have Reality Check on the other side, who I think is just a mean, lean halo playing machine that is going to come out tonight and showcase that they're the best team in this division they're it, it's kind of two 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 different spectrums here you know you got clear enemy who scrapped and fought and got their way here and you got reality check who's been strong all season long who maybe is a little bit more polished it's kind of a, not a david versus goliath situation here but it's a little bit of a cinderella story with clear enemy and it'll be exciting to see if they can finish what they started last week Regardless, no matter what happens, we are in for some exciting Halo action tonight. Let's talk a little bit about uh, the maps and game modes that we might see in this best of nine series, huh? Bringing that up on screen now so you guys can take a look. It's Reality Check versus Clear Enemy. Absolutely. And our maps, once again, uh, you notice it's a best of nine tonight. We're going objective, straight to Slayer, then oddball, CTF, Slayer, King of the Hill, which says Kill of the Hill on there. I cannot wait to give Frozen a hard time about that and his wonderful typo here on our uh, graphic. Hey, but I'm then we go the back to Slayer. Hey, it always happens, right? It, it's just one of those things. It's a PHCL staple. But looking at it, we're touching on almost every MLG map that there is, right? We can't say that the map list maybe favors one team or the other. Maybe the order helps out, but you're touching on pretty much every map out there in the MLG pl playlist. And Invincible, is there any map that kind of stands out to you as kind of a map to keep an eye on tonight in this nine-game series? Uh, I mean, that's pr it's pretty much every single map in the game type that you can play uh, in the playlist. But, I mean, I love the Pit Slayers, man. Those ones can go either way. Uh, teams can either decide to slow it down, uh, speed it up, depending on, you know, what's going on. But it's right there in the middle, so it's game number five. So, I mean, it could be the deciding factor for the series, but, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> we'll see. 
Absolutely. That middle series game can be what starts a reverse sweep, what changes the momentum of the game, or it could be, like you said, the deciding factor, the one that closes it all out. Zip, what about you? You got a map that you, you kind of have your eyes on for tonight? Um, in, in these higher, higher tiered, uh, you know, divisions, I really enjoy the maps that, uh, differentiate low ground between high ground, right? So I'm going to be looking for that guardian. I'm going to be looking for construct. Hopefully if we can get all the way to construct, right? Um, maybe, maybe a little bit of narrows. Um, I'm just excited for all those, those really like mechanic based maps that require a very good setup, um, because that's where these players are really going to shine, right? Uh, they're already very, very good at, sh at shooting. Uh, so the setup is where they, they, um you know, they stand out. Yeah, I think that's one of the biggest differences we have between our championship division and our premier division, which the finals for that is tomorrow night. So make sure you come back around for that. Our open division finals and our premiership division finals are going to be tomorrow night. So you won't want to miss championship Sunday over there. But also, you hit the nail on the head, Zip. These guys can shoot, but it's going to be who plays the most organized Halo. Who's going to be the team that comes out with the plan and they execute that plan to the best of their abilities. And, you know, coming out of that conversation, let's talk about a little bit of some of the key variables that we have for tonight. Some of the, maybe the win conditions or what you guys have your eye on. Invincible, let's start with you. What's your kind of X factor that you're looking for tonight on both teams? Uh, well, I know you talked about this, so I'm going to steal it from you. Uh, as far <laughs> as clear enemy goes, I mean, they need to keep a level head. Uh, as far as last week when we saw, like, uh, when they were down 3-0 against Infinite Ducks, I mean, the comms uh, were very bad. Uh, they were kind of just going at each other's throats. But, I mean, something happened. Something changed, right? Game 4, all of a sudden, they came back. Comms were getting clearer, a little bit better. They were believing in their shot, believing in their teamwork. And they came back in reverse sweep. So that's one of the things that I think that uh, Clear Enemy will need to work on or at least come out just gunning at the beginning to, to take this series. Absolutely. Zip, I'm going to put you on the spot a little bit more specific question. He gave us one of the keys for the clear enemy side. What are you going to be looking for over on the reality check side? What do you got your eye on for reality check? Um, I'm going to be looking for uh, Execute uh, or Medcali taking that IGL role that he's been taking the last few matches. Uh, uh, again, I do think he is probably the most intelligent uh, Halo player, if not probably one of the most, if not the most, in the PHCL. Um, I'm thinking that that person taking that IGL role there with the comms is going to be kind of ruthless. For sure, for sure. And you know what? I'm going to build off of what both of you guys said, and I'm going to go super specific with my X Factor. My X Factor tonight, the player to watch tonight in the match is Frozen. Frozen on Clear Enemy is going to be the player to watch. We have seen him not single-handedly carry this Clear Enemy team, but do pretty much everything but that. Uh, he went off on the pit slayer, and he <laughs> is a deadly, deadly man with that sniper rifle. And I see him causing massive problems tonight. <laughs> and not trying to bring up any bad memories for any Infinite Ducks fans out there, but the man was on a perfection until base guy went on a suicide mission to clean him up at the back of the map. If that man plays out of like he did that series, Clear Enemy is going to have to hold on tight and try to ride that momentum to a championship tonight. If he can't, then it's going to come down to that mental attributes of clear enemy, like you talked about, Invincible. And it's going to come down to that leadership of Mitakali and Shaw over on the reality check side of trying to deal with that problem that I think Frozen's going to be for them tonight. Yep. All of these things make complete sense to me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's going to be crazy, guys. Um... You know, I think what uh, we should probably start talking about, well, what are the rosters looking like for tonight? Well, what's the, what's the lineups going to be before we start doing our predictions? All right. So our lineups tonight for Clear Enemy, we're going to be running Frozen, who I just talked about, Alakazoom, Muted, and Touter, all four of which have been playing together for a while now. I think they've got good team chemistry, but it's going to be about how comfortable they feel tonight, how confident they're feeling tonight. Uh, then moving over to the reality check side. I believe the lineup is going to be Mitakali, which is Liquid Execute. We have Shaw, we have Fearless, and we have Serp. Uh, I also believe Legend C4 is playing a coaching role tonight. He's around in the lobby. He's going to be helping the team with timers and stuff. That's another advantage, another little X factor on the side that could help that reality check team because I think their key is going to be their organization. They have great players, don't get me wrong, but I think, like you said, Zip, both teams can shoot. It's about who executes the plan better. And yep. speaking from experience, having that coach in the lobby really mm -hmm. helps you execute that plan a lot better. Yeah. 
And, you know, a lot of people forget, you know, it doesn't matter how good or how long you've been playing the game. Everyone dies in four shots. You know, that's how it is. No doubt, no if doubt. It, no, it does matter how good you are in the game because people don't die in four shots unless you're good at the game. <laughs> True, but at this level, but at this level, right, most people are going to be aiming for that four BR. I just had to bring my open boys into play here and talk about you know, <laughs> represent the open league down there because I have not killed people in four shots very consistently through my career. I think I've done it once. <laughs> all right, once. with all this being said, ladies and gentlemen, if you're new around here, we do something very fun. We take our hard-earned channel points and we use those to bet on the outcome of the game. Who's it going to be? Reality check or clear enemy? You decide with your channel points, five minutes on the clock. If you look at the top of chat right now, you will have the opportunity to bet those channel points. Who do you think is going to take home the victory? I ask you that question, and now I ask you that question. Let's start with Invincible. What are you thinking here? Uh, Man, so I, I definitely got a chance to see Clear Enemy uh, last week when I casted, uh, watching them play against Infinite Ducks. Uh, so I kind of got a feel for those guys. Uh, as far as reality check goes, I mean, Liquid Execute, I did play with him, and I did pick him for the squad battle or the tourney uh, hosted by partner, uh, Rip. Uh, anyways, <laughs> I felt like he was such a good player, and uh, um, I definitely, he was my first round pick. Right. Uh, I heard nothing but good things about him. Um, and then when I was actually playing with him, you know, he has that potential to be the IGL. Um, he's got a clean shot. He's very knowledgeable about the game. He's been playing, you know, different uh, game types, uh, squad battle, you know, and now we're in hardcore. But uh, yeah, I think reality check's going to take it. I'm going to go maybe, maybe five, three reality check. Okay. All right. I feel it. Uh, Zip, what are you thinking? Um, I'm gonna go the opposite way there. I'm a big fan of the uh, of the clear enemy squad, specifically Frozen. Um, I also know that they, uh, you know, they must have after having some of those comms issues last uh, last matchup. They probably you know reconvened, kind of dialed that in a little bit better. Um, and they they were they were a force to be reckoned with when they did have those comms all the way back up and that morale very high. Um, so I'm gonna say. Uh, Let's go five three clear enemy. Okay, oh. five three clear enemy. We have mad channel points coming out. This is crazy. Um, I personally think so. I'm a big fan of just clear enemy as a whole. I mean, I, I love both teams, and I think if there's a team that's going to give Reality Check a run for their money, it is this clear enemy team. Um, but uh, thinking with my head, not my heart here, I, I feel like Reality Check. You know, they're they're not going to go down without a fight. I think they're going to really stick it to these guys um and it's gonna be close i feel so i kind of want to lean that five three reality check if i'm being completely honest but hey i'm dumb so i'm probably gonna be wrong hey man hey i'm gonna tell you what i was gonna start going maybe leaning towards clear enemy because of frozen but muted's in the lobby here betting on the other team you know so if one the team on, if the player on clear enemy is even betting against his own team <laughs> how oh can you feel goodness. confident in the whole squad <laughs> oh he says so, you voted the wrong team <laughs> oh that's so funny it's a weird mental strategy weird mental game here no but uh i don't know if you can give him his channel points back one of us i don't know if he can do something like that to to help him so he can put his channel points over we'll try to get a fix for you yeah i, but, I don't know uh so we'll look at it muted Apologies, my man. But what I do want to say is talk about my predictions just ever so quickly because it's kind of a toss-up to me. There's a lot of unknowns here. You know, after watching Clear Enemy go down to the wire against Infinite Ducks, you know, if you would have asked me it after Game 3 of that Infinite Ducks series, I would have been like, game's over, right? But this team showed that even when they get down and out on themselves, they can bounce back. But you can only push something so far until it breaks. It's not a seven-game series anymore. It's a nine-game series. If Clear Enemy starts slow again, they could find themselves three or four down and then have to string together a five-game win streak. Or, you know, it's going to be a longer win streak. It's going to be a bigger hole to climb out of. They cannot do that tonight. They have to come out swinging. They have to come out positive. They have to come out playing to the ability that we know this team can play at. Frozen's got to be the IGL, Alakazoom, Muted, um, all those guys, Touter on that squad, need to come out and, and play the games of their lives. Reality Check needs to do the same. But I think the margin of error is larger on the Reality Check side. I think they have a little bit more leeway in maybe getting away with some mistakes and in a long series. 
the more leeway you have, the better, you know, the better you can, you know, not the, the less perfect you have to play all the time to get the win, the better chance you have to win. Mm -hmm. I will never bet against clear enemy getting swept ever again after what I saw them do against infinite ducks. Nope. So I'm going to say, I think they take it to the wire. I think we're here for a long time tonight, guys, but I think the nine game series is just going to be a little bit too much for clear enemy to overcome. And I'm going to go five, four reality check and they take the finals. Wow. Okay. So a lot of love going the way of reality check. And I, I, I really think clear enemy is going to surprise us. I got that feeling in my bones. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. uh, so the guys are, seems like they're ready. Anything else we have to cover before we, uh, we let these guys start, start killing each other. I'm sorry. Say that again. I was just taking some care of some administrative <laughs> stuff off the side. I thought of you course, were going to be doing your predictions and that's just Bush league. No, on I, already my part, got, so. I already got mine. I already got mine. <laughs> Essentially I'm dumb and I have no idea what's going to happen. That was my prediction. Um, so the, these, these boys are ready to go. Is, who's right tonight then. So. <laughs> is, is there anything else we need to cover before we let these guys uh, start killing each other? Um, we talked about the X factors. <laughs> We've looked at the maps. Um, Zip is seeing funny stuff going on in the chat. So <laughs> I think we are ready for some Halo action. Who? What streams are we going to be starting off tonight? We will uh, be starting with, off with Alakazoom on the side of Clear Enemy and Liquid Execute on the side of Reality Check. And we'll be going live with Alakazoom for the start. So boys, grip it and rip it. It's ready for Premier Halo Championship time. I'm super excited for yeah, this. I go. cannot wait. Um, so somebody needs to remind these countdown. guys that it needs to not be 15 minute time limits. Uh, it should be a 30 minute time limit because there's no ties tonight. So I, yeah. I would love to make sure that they get that 30 minute time limit um, if they have anything still going on. Um, uh, let's see if any of them are in the lobby. Yeah, I'll be right back. There we go. They're changing it. <laughs> okay, cool, 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 cool. Very cool. Very cool. Oh, I can't. You start talking for that. crap about Tonzi. Oh, never mind. Sorry. <clears throat> Kidding. What? I'm back. I'm back. Oh, but I'm blurry. Um, so I'm gonna have to turn that off and then turn it back Tonsi, on. Where are you? All I see is just a, a blur of you colors. What, it's a John you know Cena what, cosplay. I know when you rub your eyes, you know that's what happened there. We just <laughs> I just rubbed a little bit too much. Everything was blurry, but they got it fixed. We're gonna start with some craziness on MLG Heretic. It's going to be a good time. It's going to be a fantastic match. And I don't know. I really think this is going to be huge for reality check if they can come out strong here. Well, we got started with one of us. Ladies and gentlemen, we are loading in with Alakazoom Heretic CTF here on the PHCL. Boys, take it away. All right. Well, Alakazoom loading into the match right now. Moving towards P Tower here, getting some nades across onto P Street, getting some shots coming in from the window side. Moving straight up to P3 initially. Fearless goes down due to a nade, and good early control by Clear Enemy. I see a couple red X's on the blue squad. Good so job one, securing P2 by Alakazoom. Frozen already pushing into the, D, the, the base, but he goes down, and it's a good aggressive start from Clear Enemy. Alakazoom pushing in, takes down Fearless with a nice double kill. He's looking towards car side. Looks like he's going to throw this flag bottom mid. He's got somebody down there waiting, but bottom mid is such a tough place to try to get a flag run as they go down. Flags at the base, though. If they can get a touch, this could be something that's good for him. However, it doesn't look like it's going to culminate into anything, but good early start from clear enemy, don't you think, uh, Invincible? Yeah, that was a really good uh, starting push there. I have to agree with you that, that pulling the flag bottom middle, I don't think was the best play. I, I'd say run it car there, uh, try to get this block the spawn or something, but it looks like reality check, getting the first flag cap, a nice counter cap there, uh, utilizing three down from clear enemy with that mistake, running the flag down the mid, and uh, let's see if they can capitalize on another one. Two down here from clear enemy. We got frozen here, pushing up on the window. Let's see if he can make a play here. Should be pushing car side. Oh, doubles back, gets a kill on the window, nice. Liquid Execute trying to get, ooh, takes out Alakazoom right there. That was a nice kill there. Uh, three down on both sides. Sky on the on the flag. What do you think they need to do right here, Clarity Me, to come back into this game, Zip? Uh, you know, I think they really just need to slow things down. Uh, it seems like they're kind of like a little, like a little, you know, hyperactive at the moment. It's only 1-0. It's the first game of a nine-game series, right? Slow it down. Focus on the slaying. As you get people down, then you pull the flag, right? They did pull that flag down bottom mid. Like you said, that's not a very conventional spot to take. That lane is not a very easy lane to take. Um, so I think that if they slow down, really think about their movements and uh, be very methodic about it, that's how they're going to win this. 
Yeah, my thing off of that start there is I think they sold out a little bit too much. I think they got too excited about their start that they wanted to have something from it, and it sold them out too much, and it left them exposed for the counter cap. We've seen it happen on these small maps before. Um, let's go into a listen in with Alakazoom and Clear Enemy. Let's see how they're bouncing back from going down one early. Let's see if the comms are positive. Let's see how they're handling it. One shot P2, Sha. One shot P2, Sha. Left side. He's oh out there, God. out there in the street. I got shot, Bill. Bill, I got that guy. We killed him, we killed him. Pushing him. Eli, they're Eli, they're Eli. Oh. Nice stick, nice stick. Oh, yeah, they stick. Stick. Basement, bro. Oh, basement. Two, they're Eli. One pushing P2, one pushing the flag. One shot, they're, they're Eli, bro. I thought they were weak, my bad. P3. Spawn P3. their streets, spawn their streets. Going their flag. Doing their flag. Three on their flag, three in their flag. I'm going, I'm going P3, I'm going P3. I'm going P3. I'm going P3. 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 He's jumping. He's at our Eli. Our Eli muted. I got, I got card. Nice. No one card. I one, one, one push my P3. Our bubbles, healing. guys. Our bubbles, one shot. I'm healing, I'm healing. I'm one shot. I don't feel bubble. I, 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 I shot him twice, but he didn't die, so he must have regen. P3 won P1. P1. He, he won P1. He won P1. He fell P1. He fell P1. One P2. Oh. Dude, one shot P2. Dude, I cannot fight. Yo, I'm gonna try to coming play out of that listening. I'm getting on them. Our window. Our A few takeaways for me early on in this match. Good positivity in the comms from clear enemy it sounds like but i'm not hearing much direction i'm not hearing much uh purpose in the call outs i'm hearing them surviving together as we see alakazoom take down and get a crucial flag stop there to keep themselves from going down 2-0 but it sounds like surviving right now from clear enemy and there's only so long that you can survive before your defenses break down do you have any other takes on that invincible yeah i agree um the comms were, were very like they they weren't really too down on each other but yeah i agree they weren't really like hey i'm pushing this way or, or i'm watching this way you know they, a little bit more teamwork maybe uh a little bit more i'd say in-game control uh uh to to start that one out but i mean they tried to get a fly cap there there was three down uh, maybe they can potentially get this first fly cap in. Uh, Alex Zoom taking P3 here. A uh, very strong position here. Gets a flank on Shaw. Let's see if he can get the kill. Yes, he does. And that's cap number one for clear enemy. Absolutely. And, you know, that's one of those things we talk about. Curse of the commentator. I said they were surviving. And as soon as we go away from the listening, they turn it into a flag cap. They get on the front foot. And, you know, we said that there was positivity in those comms. They take that positivity. They finally get a little bit more organized. And they get a flag cap. I'm watching Liquid execute stream right now, and he just ended a spree by muted. And if a team on a player on your team is on a spree in Heretic, your team is going to be on the front foot. So that probably contributed to that flag cap. Great job by Liquid Execute holding the top tower here, trying to help get his team back in it. We got a pool going car side, it looks like. Throwing it down bottom mid. This is the second time we've seen bottom mid kind of being utilized here, but this time it's being ran over towards bottom car, trying to get a little bit more of a traditional route. Just kind of taking a quicker approach to it. Great kill there by Liquid Execute and Mitakali. And great answer by Reality Check to retake their 2 1 lead. Uh, I don't know. I don't, that's the second time we've seen the flag go bottom middle. And I, I can't agree with that flag. I mean, four down, you know, one spawning up. As soon as you pull the flag, I mean, just take a car. You only have one body to fight, maybe two if the second guy spawns up there. Uh, it's just a bad run, in, in my opinion. Uh, clear enemy, though, trying to get a counter cap, and they do. Alec Zoom P2 gets another cure onto Fearless. Power position here. He needs to get up to P3. Watch the spawns, either bottom P1 or the bottom base. Trying to clean up the person on uh, enemy t player on his side. Good job here. Now he needs to take P3 controller. There he is. Liquid execute already there. Trying to fight back. Take that power position oh. back. And he does a great job doing so. Absolutely. And this is great work from Clear Enemy bouncing back after you know that surviving period that they had because you cannot survive the whole game you have to go on the front foot you have to create an opportunity for yourself and they've done that they've tied it up 2-2 they've answered another cap by uh reality check and it looks like they might actually take the lead here as another good pool goes their way and frozen gets it a 3-2 lead for clear enemy let's go over to reality check listen in and see how they're holding up on their comps all right frozen's good. Frozen's last good. ones yep Hey, P2, needed P2. He's gonna be one shot P2. P2. All right, there you go. let's get control. Spawn in their car, spawn in their car. Our Frozen's our, their, our, their car. Our car flight, our car flight. Going car three. He's two shot our car. Serp, get up. There you go, okay, good. Our car. There we go. 
It was in car three, going car two, our side. Yeah. Car two right now, Towder, he's weak. He's flying. He's one Towder bubble. Got him. Yeah, Towder Towder's was car dead. two. Okay, he's dead. All right. Towder's spawn in car, spawn in car, weak. All right, run that shit. I'm watching P1. Take it. Flag drop. Flag. On their base. Yep, they spawn, they spawn flag. Yep, spawn. Yep. Frozen's dead. All right, we leak their flag. Zoom their flag. All right, All right three dead. Coming three dead. out of that with the scenario. Oh, that's the last one. Okay, okay. All right. back and forth match. I don't yeah. even know how this is gonna. I don't can't really get a vibe on anybody being in actual control because it seems like both teams are having to work so hard to get a flag cap that it almost leaves them exposed to another cap almost immediately. We haven't seen somebody totally take control of the map, which is why we've seen this back and forth nature of it. Zip, when this map gets chaotic to you, when you find yourself in a crazy match on a small map, what's your mentality? How do you let yourself stay in the game without getting frustrated? Um, you know, really just make sure that I'm being aware of where my teammates are at on the map, where I'm spawning off a of spawn, and then really trying to prolong my life um, to do as much as I can for my team. Uh, especially in a game type like this, you would think that that would be a normal thing to do in Slayer, but it, even in these objective game types, staying alive and, and being the last man up uh, is a crucial uh, job. Uh, it, it basically allows... Um, you can you you can then control where your teammates respawn at, right? Um, so keeping your head on a swivel like that is very very important, um, and that's what I would do. I would I would just make sure that I'm uh, you know watching my teammates where they're at, prolonging my life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Whenever you're afraid or even petrified, somebody just has to stay alive. You know. Yep. Um, I hope that 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 landed there. One of us, the the little inside joke there. But we have a four to three lead by reality check as they now have two back to back caps. One of us just gave me the most sarcastic smile, <laughs> guys, just so you know. Um, but no, we have a 4-3 lead reality check. They look to finally have a little bit of control over the map. I see Liquid Execute flying around the map, and what a great stick there as he takes down Frozen and allows his team to get a pull here. This is a crucial pull. They're pulling it car side. Good patience there as you don't just run blindly into the nades coming around the corner. I don't know if they're going to turn this into anything. This is a good 1v1 right here. Muted with a crucial win there. Frozen assassinates uh, Serp. Shaw takes out Muted. Fearless takes a lot of red X's going the way, which means that pull stalls out. And Clear Enemy gets to stay alive for just a little bit longer. But in the waning moments of this game, how do you... How do you approach being down 4-3 Invincible? How do you come back from knowing you can't make any more mistakes? You have to play the best Halo of your life at this point. Just got all has to come together, right? Just keep doing what they're doing. I mean, they're only down by one cap. I mean, there's still plenty of time left in the game. You can't really assume the game's over, but yeah, with one flat cap is all there is left. I mean, every single decision that you make is just going to be that much more crucial. Um, so they really need to just tighten down, um, not overextend if they don't need to, and just... Uh, uh, Hold it together. Tyler needs to win this battle here. He does. So he does get that kill. Good recover there. Um, looks like Serp is in the, in the flag. Three down. If, if Alakazoom is able to get this kill, he does. He should run this car now. They might spawn there, actually. There's nobody from his team over there. Oh, they spawn another the base. This could be a good flag right here for clear enemy. Could be 4-4. Four, four. Alakazoom taking shots. Oh, he's taken down. Person in the window needs to rotate. They get the kill on the car. There's only one guy up. All four dead. This should be a 4-4 four, four flag for sure. Clear enemy. Yep. And, the, and that is what it is, and that's what they needed, right? Now, both teams are playing the same way. Both teams are playing with the same pressure. We saw some good early control by um, uh, Reality Check there, but they lost it now, and once again, they go four down, and this is a pull by Clear Enemy, and they are taking it car once again. Alakazoom has it. He is through car, the bottom car now. He's getting close to getting capped. I don't think this is going to get stopped, and I think... Oh, no, he does go down. Flag is sitting there on their car side. All they need is a touch. But I see three red X's on the red squad. And no, wait, it's uh, going. Outer. My it. goodness. Oh, oh my enemy. goodness. Let's Game go. Game one. What a, what a fantastic yeah. match. That was a huge Super play back and forth all the time. Yeah, Towder coming around the corner and making that last play. I didn't see anybody around there once he went down. Uh, once Alakazoom went down, I thought that was maybe going to be a stall out. But great Towder. heads up play by Towder. I don't know if you guys noticed, but Towder was hanging out top red most of the match. Uh, he was yeah. really defending that flag, and that and honestly, that rotation out to be in the flag there, defending, um, ready for that, uh, you know, that relay, uh, won that match. The last two caps there were were Towder's caps. Yeah, I think him staying window 
uh, definitely gave a uh, um, clear enemy a chance to even spawn flag uh, if they were to respawn there. And I mean, he got hit with the plasma grenade as he was coming around the corner. I don't know if you guys saw that, but he was definitely half shields. And I mean, kudos to him, man. He was able to, to keep the flag alive, throw it in, and he actually was able to even get the cap for the win. I mean, that was just a huge play right there from Tatter. It could have been a reverse cap I and mean, when we saw it all game they've been back and forth every time someone got three down it was just ca counter cap after counter cap after counter cap and uh man what a game though for game number one honestly absolutely and moving on into game number two we didn't we forgot to show you our um our little map preview that we had for game one but real quick what must why don't you take us through map number two and what we should be looking for absolutely map number two will be narrows on slayer and let's take a little bit of a look narrows Slayer. My goodness, what a map. So key things to look out for here. The sniper rifle spawns every two and a half minutes. Crucial in a game like this. Rocket spawning every three minutes. And if you can keep up with those, you'll have control of the map. Absolutely. And that sniper rifle is even more crucial in this match because we have Frozen on one side and we have Fearless on the other side. Both are fantastic snipers. Trademark, I see that hat switch. I'll go, I'll go ahead and redeem that for you right now, my man. Amps. Absolutely, and I'm going to take this time to get those streams pulled up for myself. Exciting game one, and that's exactly what you needed if you're a clear enemy to start this match. Um, because... You have to build momentum. You can't rely on your, your ability to fight back from the brink of elimination. Um, and they did that. So I want to see them continue to build on this. This is another crucial map. If they can build an early lead, maybe we're starting to talk about reality checks mental state and not you know clear enemy being the one. So both of these teams need to keep working hard. This is a crucial game if you are reality check. And it'd be great to see them bounce back with a win here to keep going back and forth. Uh, in the series, because like I said, I think it's going to go the distance. And if those players are watching, we are ready for, to go live into game two whenever they are. Um, and I'll shoot I'm, I'm excited for what what we're about to see. Yeah, Gee, um, geez, I think man. this map is going to be uh, in the hands of Reality Check. Uh, I believe that uh, they were the team that outslayed. Um, clear enemy last map um it wasn't by a lot but they definitely did uh, there was a lot of sprees ended I, I did see clear enemy end a lot of sprees um so i'm looking for i mean fearless to go off with the sniper but i mean frozen we know that he, what he's capable of i mean he's definitely a, a sniper to be reckoned with but i mean liquid execute as well he's, he's very sneaky knows how to play the map so i don't know this is going to be a toss-up again I, i'm super excited man yeah, we've seen it over and over throughout some of these longer series. Some teams who outslay in the objective game modes, they carry that over to the Slayer game modes. Yep. And yep. it's all about sealing some of the objective ones because most of the time, a better Slayer tends to show its head. And right now, I do think the better Slayer is Reality Check. But that could change, especially with a sniper rifle in the hands of Frozen. And let's ride along with him off the start as he goes towards that sniper rifle, oh, nading top mid, being patient. I like those helping nades there because that top 50 control is so crucial. But Ooh. Clear Enemy knows how important that sniper rifle is as Liquid Execute takes him out and gets control of that sniper rifle. And on the other side, we have Fearless hitting the double kill with two snipes of his own oh, and helping control the top side of the map. I mean, like I said, man, Liquid Execute being sneaky right off the start, just making those, you know, crucial plays i mean going over the man cannon usually that player is easily taken out but somehow he's able to pick up that kill and get the sniper rifle out of the hands of clear enemy and i mean now it's just a stalemate they got snipers on both sides uh rockets in the hand of reality check uh we're gonna see the six one here let's see if they can make a play here yep definitely get a kill oh liquid execute trying to push up looks like they're not trying to push up they're nine two they should be taking uh like top mid control with both these power weapons yeah 10 2 control maybe a little bit of not timidness i would say but just a little bit of patience almost on the side of reality check early trying to hold on to this early lead let's go into their comms and see why they're playing the way that they're playing at the moment yes i'm looking for him he's going underneath i'm looking all right he's not the far yeah, R2 right now. Three bottom mid side. I'm one shot. I can't help you, sir. Hey, two. They're pushing across. One's coming there. Uh, fucking you. One shot our flag plant. One shot our flag right now. He's on the box. One shot. 
He grenaded me. Alright guys, we got this. We're like all separated, dude. Get lobby control. I'm in there, fight! Alright, you gotta have to lobby. I'm in there, fight! He's, He's hiding, hiding our box. Get our bolts, dude. Top 50, okay. okay. Nice okay. shot. Close, How many snipes do we have left? Listen, I got right, three bullets. Oh, no, the zoom's top 30 seconds. We got a minute on rockets. I'm going low. 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 Thank you, Our snipe, one shot. 150. Kali, Kali, shoot like next dude. Nice. Times three. Tower, one shot, L1. One shot, one shot. Frozen got me. One shot. Sniper up. Sniper's down. Lobby, lobby going to our attics. Here right now. Tower's left box. Tower's left box. 30 seconds. 30 seconds on rockets. Tower's blue. All right, coming out of that, listen in. Let's go over to the clear enemy perspective as we see Frozen helps clear enemy push forward a little bit and building off of what Invincible said, that passiveness kind of costs map control on the side of reality check and now Frozen has a sniper rifle of his very own in his hand looking to cause some problems and it is still about a 10 kill lead so you can't say that reality check's in a bad place but I think they really could have steamrolled off of that start that they had but they chose to play it passive they ended up getting spawn killed in lobby and now clear enemy is putting some pressures Alakazoom picks up a double kill a snipe by fearless and not, I'm not fearless by frozen and now it's a seven eight kill game invincible is that what you were talking about when you were worried about them not taking that map control early yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about. I mean, it was a double-digit game, not even 30 seconds ago, and now look, it's only 8 kills. They're only up by 8 kills. I mean, they had both snipers, so, I mean, having both of them back in the lobby like that isn't really a bad play. I'd like to see the two um, roamers uh, push up, maybe L1, R1, uh, maybe get more control. Nice snipe out of there by Frozen on Fearless again, once again, dude. Liquid Execute. Oh my oh god, my that no scope. Oh the man my man. No scope. Wow. That's exactly what they need. That's the type of plays you need uh, for your team to get back into this game. Only down by eight still. Still anybody's game. Narrows can go either way. Uh, I mean, I, I like this play right here. I, who is that on the other side? I believe that's tre Trev? Huge Trev? double. He's in the, yeah, huge oh double. I, I think it's Towder in their lobby. Yeah, absolutely. And it's one of those things where we, we see the game kind of still staying at arm length, for, arm length for reality check right now. But they're going to have to start really bearing down. Frozen went on a nasty little spree there with the sniper. He's got one shot left. The next rotation of power weapons, I think, is going to be very crucial here because it was, I think, just maybe sitting in lobby a little bit too long that was the problem for Reality Check. Let's take a listen in with Frozen and Clear Enemy since we already listened in with Reality Check. Right pocket. Right, R2. R2 going our sniper. Trap. 50, 50, 50 top left. 50 top left. Yeah, I wasn't expecting that. Snipe set 10. Mine 50. Yeah, we got Mine 50, Surf weak. I'm trying to nade top man. I'm one shot, dude. I can't move. Right pocket. Sniper oh, right pocket. L is oh. one. Dude, R1, one shot absolute. L1, L1. Into our sniper, R1. Oh. R1, peeking you, one shot absolute. I got a shot him, so I got it. Sniper got to spawn. Distraction. I killed R1, I killed top R1. Top left, top left. Yeah, I'm I'm left. Nice. R1, R1. Yo, let's, we gotta get our sniper. sniper on their sniper. R1 still, dude. One shot, one shot, L1, dude. Yo, five lives, five lives. All right, coming out of that listen in, there's the control you were talking about, Invincible, and there's the lead that control like that gives you, isn't it? Yeah, so they're, they were definitely, I mean, you can hear it from the comms from Clear Enemy. There's another one, R1, again. What that means is that, I mean, Reality Check is putting the pressure on. They got people top mid. They're putting shots across the map, holding angles, and they have uh, roamers just making sneaky plays like that. And that's definitely what you want to do on Narrows. You want to sneak around, if you can, into the lobby, get the flanks, and also control the top mid. Yep. Game's kind of stalled out a little bit as it's a 13-kill lead for Reality Check and Clear Enemy doing every everything they can to survive right now. Great sneak play once again by Midakali. Liquid Execute moving through and dealing with Frozen's dangerous sniper presence. And that's what's kept him from really having that big impact on this map that we saw him have earlier at different points and throughout the season. One kill away from tying up this series by Reality Check. They just need one more. Towder takes out uh, Fearless, but the last kill goes the way of Reality Check. That is a 50 to 34 win. Great performance by Akali and Shaw, and great aggressiveness. I think their aggressiveness towards the end of that match is what allowed them to run away with it, and had they started that way, I think they could have steamrolled through that map. Yeah, 100%. If they would have kept that 
pressure, like I was saying, I mean, as soon as I said it, right, the sneaky play to take out, to flank around the main cannon, flank around the flag side, get that sniper out of the hands of the enemy team looking top mid, exactly what Liquid is able to do. I mean, if they were able to do that from the beginning, it would have been a 15, uh, 50 to 15 or 50 to 20, you know. But, I mean, they decided to, to slow it down, and, I mean, it kind of cost them, but they were still able to hold control of that whole entire map. So kudos to uh, Reality Check there. Absolutely, and a fantastic bounce back map by Reality Check. That's what you want to see. You want to see some back and forth Halo action. We talked about their strength as Slayers. They showed it on that map, and now that's going to carry us up, carry us over into map three. And what do you got for us for game three, What am us? Absolutely, map three. That is going to be the great equalizer, Guardian Oddball. Let's take a look. Now, on Guardian Oddball, there's a specific few things you want to look out for. The sniper rifle spawning for every two and a half minutes. Getting S3 control is super important. And if you're not like me, camo spawning every two minutes. Very important. I always forget that. <laughs> Had to throw that in there. Wait. Sorry. <laughs> Because it's invisible, right? I mean, it's you wouldn't forget about invisible. it if it was visible, right? Uh, <laughs> but we're talking about Gu Guardian Oddball. It's Banana Lands. I love PD. Got to quote Banana Lands. Any chance we get. And we're going to be looking for setups here. And where are the setups these teams are going to be looking for, Zip? Um, I, I, uh, probably the most common setup that's going to be that, that you're going to see is the green to elbow setup. Uh, sniper side as well, holding that person, the, the ball carrier, in, uh, in the actual elbow area. But... So the sneakiest, and honestly, if they can set it up, which is also possible for these guys to do playing at the level that they play at, is uh, setting up in Blue Room. Um, there's only two entrances uh, into that, really, that you can be watching, and it's, it's pretty, uh, you know, pretty fatal if, if you get a good setup in Blue Room. Yep, and these teams know what they're doing. It's going to be an aggressive match. We are ready to go when you guys are ready to go for Game 3. I think that we're going to see some momentum built up here by Reality Check after that awesome Slayer performance on Narrows. I think they found something when they got aggressive at the end of the map. I expect them to keep that aggressiveness going here on Oddball. And if they do that here, it's a small map, not a lot of room to breathe, and you got to be ready to go with it. What perspectives are we dealing with on this next map? We're jumping right what? in here with Alakazoom, and on the other side, we'll have Liquid Execute. All right, Wadamus, if you could take us through maybe the first minute or so or whoever has pulled up as I pull up these streams on my end. I gotcha. Loading in here with Alakazoom, Guardian Oddball. They got the bottom blue spawn. He looks to be going towards shortcut, jumping up here towards top gold, getting some nades out there. Looks like he might go for the... Oh, big kill there. Nades are coming in on camo, though. They knew exactly what he was going to do. Serpex takes up the camo. He grabs the carbine, looking for maybe a cheeky little kill here. Does not seem to get it. Serpex is backed out. Red X is popping up. We do have Touter taking the ball to top gold. Okay. Fearless goes down from muted. Fantastic work there. Shaw jumping over to S3 trying to get control there. And Alakazoom goes down for some crossfire. Oh my goodness. This is already off to a crazy start. But I will say, oh, good play there from, I believe that's Touter down in the, oh, did the ball not actually go off? Nope. Looks like, it looks like it's sitting off. right there in the corner. Let's go right on over to Reality Check. I want to hear their comms. I want to see how aggressive they're starting out, what they're calling out. I know Guardian has a little bit of a feel-out period as you look for the setup before the pool, but I want to see what they're looking to do setup-wise. Oh one shot S3, one shot S3. Make sure you guys are like taking advantage of blue. Top, like, green, top, going top, top mid, mid, two of them, top mid, two of them. Ball, one S2. Counters, one shot with ball. Top, top green, one shot. They're going to elbow. Yep, they're going high elbow. With uh, ball. yep. Ball guy is 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 alone, so just kill him. Yep. And we'll... Ball guy's one shot. All right, get the snipe. Get there get the go. snipe set up. All right, sniper's gonna be up in about a minute. Bottom, hey, bottom we're, mid, we're bottom mid, bottom mid, bottom mid, bottom mid. Bro? Sir, never never lean on that left side of that tree, bro. That's a terrible spot. Spawn gold. Try not to have to drop down off the top of that tree. To All right, I played it. Camel's gonna be coming up at 12, uh, 48. All right, cool. Thank you. Play. Yo, S2, S2 one shot, S2 one shot, push him fearless. Hey, three dead, three dead, Put, take ball, take ball. You both can't jump, all right, that's fine. Just take, just go. Top gold, top gold. Watch top gold. Bottom gold now and, and blue wind, and blue wind down. Coming out of that, listen in. Got a feel for mid Akali there as he was frustrated about something his team did, then a beat down came to his back as he got assassinated. But you heard him catch his breath there. You heard him go back to being... Uh, productive with the comms, right? Just because you're talking doesn't mean you're talking about stuff that you need to talk about. He's giving good call-outs for his team. We talked about his importance as an IGL for his squad. 
and it's great to see him doing it as we see him flying around the map, picking up kill after kill. And now we're starting to see a little bit more ball control from Reality Check. What are you seeing so far from this map, Invincible, that you kind of are seeing from both of these squads? It's back and forth. Oh, it's liquid egg is huge. Just falls off the map. It seems like he just has unfortunate event after unfortunate event. Um, it's back and forth. Um, you know, both teams are really, uh, what I, I think is the mistake here is they're grabbing ball at the wrong times. Uh, I think they need to just, you know, I think people are just forcing the ball uh, when there's only two down. You want to really grab it when you get a fresh three down. That gives you the most opportunity to, to get a good setup going. And, I mean, it's worth it to, to wait till there's three members down or even four. Oh, and another no scope. And Liquid just taking out his frustration. Oh, another one. The map. Nice. Able to stay alive. Gets two down. And sniper control here. Let's see if they should grab the ball right now. This is an opportune time for them to grab the ball. That guy S3 should have went down and grabbed the ball. But now they, they can't. They have to reset up, uh, wait for them to spawn again. And see, that's what I'm talking about. Grabbing that ball right there is maybe not the best play. But I think uh, clear enemy was out of position and, and it paid off for him. But the percentage there was just, I would have waited for another three down. Yeah, I mean, you missed out on probably 15 seconds of ball time before that. Now their setup's immediately broken. It's an immediate play. They don't get a good chunk of points that they could have had. As we see a bunch of red X's on the map right now, a lot of snipe tower fighting going on right now. Both teams looking to really control that snipe tower to get the setup that they're looking for. I'm seeing clear enemy beeline it for that elbow almost immediately every time, though. Trying to get that green set up. Muta goes down to a nice double kill by Liquid Execute, but another nade goes off at his feet. Let's go over to Alakazoom's perspective with clear enemy and take a listen in with that squad. On green, on green, with the ball and sniper. Camo and top goal. Bottom mid, bottom mid, we have Bottom mid, he's got to be one shot, bro. He's bottom mid. Bottom mid, bottom mid, we have ball. We're good. Just keep him off. Go for it. Yeah, I need help. I don't. He's dead. Camel's on elbow. Camel's on elbow. Good shit. Watch out of gauge up. Watch out of gauge up. He's bottom goal. Watch I need, I'm dying, I'm dying. From I'm where? trying to play for health, I need you to shoot. Wait, from bottom where? Bottom I, I can't if we... Bottom mid, bottom mid and S2 now. Bottom mid and S2 now. I, I top goal, top, top mid, top mid and elbow. On the ball, on the ball, on the ball. Running S2. He's high elbow, frozen, he doesn't know you're there. He doesn't know you're there. Yeah, I know, they have no idea I'm here. Top green with shots. Oh, two top green. He has two two snipe shots to green. One shot, bottom green, I need help. Nice. Elbow, That's shot, three dead. Three dead. Three dead. No one green. There was no one green. Coming out of that listening, and all I can say is chaos. <laughs> all I can yeah. say is just a little bit of unorganized chaos going on in this map right now. As I think teams are just so afraid of giving to just any ball time over to the other squad that they're forcing themselves into some bad positions. We're seeing it from both sides here, and. I think a little bit of patience. The first team that gets patient and says, okay, I don't care if you take 15 seconds, as we see an unfortunate fall off the map there by Mitakali uh, a second ago. Uh, but the first team who gets patient and says, I don't care if you take that 10, 15 seconds, I want to take the 50 second run. I think that's the team who we're going to see really take control of this map. Will any team get to that point? I don't really know. Both comms sound a little bit chaotic. Both comms sound a little bit, not frustrated, but panicky. And... Somebody's going to have to calm their team down and really help them take control of this map. Or we're going to see a probably low-scoring ball game that comes down to whoever has the ball last. I mean, coming out of that listening, too, I mean, I, I want to point it out. There was a, a crucial moment there where Alex Zoom says three down, and there was literally a person top mid right by the ball. And instead of grabbing the ball and taking it out, they just soared S2 to try to get that sniper control. I mean, yeah, it's a good play, but when there's three down, I mean, it's all it's objective. It isn't Slayer, you know. So you got to grab that ball, get set up. Alex Zoom here needs a, a – wow, I'm surprised that guy did not die S2. That was insane. Um uh, <laughs> it looks a little bit frustrated there with that uh, reality check. Able to okay, they play the ball here. I uh, see a lot of uh, teammates coming in to break this setup here. Let's see if they're able to take sniper control. Zip, what do you think that needs to happen for them to to take control of this game? I mean, it's only a four second game, three down now. I mean, what do you think? For for which which team? Reality check or clear or enemy? enemy? Clear enemy. 
clear to me. I mean, I'm going to piggyback off what Tanzi said, right? Halo at this level um, is is a mental game uh, and patience is a virtue, right? Uh, I'm seeing a lot of times uh, people uh, slaying out right next to the ball, picking the ball up immediately, right? Don't do that. Sit there for a second. Assess the situation. Hey, where are they respawning at? Oh, they're over here. All right, I can, I can kind of put some shots into a little bit for a second. You know, that is still playing like you're not giving you any any free points away. Um, but it is also being uh, mentally conscious uh, as to where your next move is going to be. You need to think in the future, not in the moment. Some deep stuff from Zip there. I love to hear that. Absolutely agree, man. I mean, coming. I mean, I like to say I'm a high tier hardcore player as well, and you cannot have said it any better, man. As soon as you get a double kill or something like that, you need to be pressing that back button. You need to be seeing how many enemy players are dead, and based off of that, you can make decisions. And then based off of where your teammates are at, you can kind of figure out where the enemy team is going to spawn, and that's what this game's about, man. Seriously. Yeah, mm -hmm. and, and it's, what so we're close. Oh, it's so close. Yeah. It's so close, so that doesn't really matter, right? The 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 picking up the ball at this point in the match, it, it's a four second game, right? You can spare those four extra seconds. Uh, that's less than a respawn timer, right? Take your time, yeah. think it out. You know, and what it is, guys, we're watching a Slayer game mode that has a ball in it. That's really what it feels like we're watching right now. These guys are so focused on racking up those kills. The Slayer numbers at the end of this map are going to be crazy. But nobody's being efficient with those slays. Everybody's just racking up kills. And now we're seeing a little bit of a run from reality check as we're getting to the deeper part of the game mode. And we said it. If this, is, if that's what they're doing, if they're slaying against each other and just looking who's going to outslay whoever on this map, reality check's going to win that fight. Because they just outslayed on narrows, and we talked about them being the better slayers earlier. So now they have a little bit more substantial of a lead. But I can't think of a time that pulled up. No. <laughs> oh, MCC, no. <laughs> oh, he doesn't get the lunge there, unfortunately. But I mean, it's back and forth. I, feel I mean, pain. they were only able to get 20 seconds off that setup. It was a really good setup there from Reality Check. Uh, I think there was a mistake made. Uh, Reality Check had a player go top middle. I mean, not, you know, you don't want to go top mid if you have a setup already. There's no point, in my opinion, that you should be top mid. I mean, at least be top green, bottom green. You can still hold the same angles from bottom mid, top gold. And now we see a swing here. Now we see a clear enemy bringing the ball, elbow. They look like they have a good setup. Guy overextended in blue window. See, this is what I'm talking about. Um, Triab needs to be not pushing too much. Maybe get back to green there. I love that position here. Let's see if they can uh, either bring this game back and tie it up. Oh, it looks like the, the setup might be broken here. Syrup needs to get this kill. Big kill. The ball doesn't get played. Oh, no. Oh, it's on the edge. And it's now it's in the hands of clear enemy. Yeah, Alakazoom trying to survive there. But what we see is you talked about that death at blue. You knew the breaking of that setup was going to come because there's only one person green at that point. And Alakazoom's sitting elbow. He's a sitting duck with the ball. Yeah, he's going to drop and throw a nade and put some shots in. But he, he he's going to die. And that setup is broken because instead of getting over to the setup of the team, they're looking for picks constantly throughout this game. And I don't think each team is meaning to. I think they're just being, it's such a fast-paced game mode. It's so much pressure on them that they're looking for shots. They're looking for fights. I've watched a number of players lift over to the snipe tower and just eat shots from somebody who's already on the snipe tower because their head was looking the other way. And three down right now, four down right now, four reality check, and... Clear enemy's gonna have to get something going here because we're talking about an 86 to 63 game with four and a half, like four something minutes left. And that is a low, low scoring ball game. Let's take a listen in with clear enemy right now to see what they're gonna try to do to break this setup. Got here, he's one shot. He's dead. He's dead. They're lifting. They're about to lift. They're about to lift. Yeah. I got one. I got one. Shot. 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 one. Just keep I'm leading. Don't push it. I'm leading. I'm leading. Oh, no. Do I need a play? No one lifted. Two lifted. Two lifted. Two lifted. I needed him. I played it. I played it. I played it. That's three dead. Last one bottom green. Last one. Elbow. 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 He's weak. He's weak. He's absolute. He's absolute. You should be able to get him. He's still weak. I'm lifting him. Someone try to... We're fine. We don't need to be able to... Bottom mid, one camel, one bottom mid. Top mid. Alright, here, bottom mid. Oh, he's just bottom mid. He wasn't camo. Oh, I'm looking for Two window, two window. One's lifting, one's lifting sniper now. Lifting sniper. There you go. Stay low and snipe. What are we doing? Fucking naded himself. What an idiot! Nice. I got ball, I got ball, I got ball, I got ball. I'm playing top green. Bottom mid. Shots on bottom mid. Alright, coming out of that listen and still. Crazy chaotic game mode. Still nobody getting a good setup. I see these players running to the correct positions. 
but then there's no teammates in the correct positions around him. So what's the point of taking it elbow if you have nobody set up green beside you? What's the point of having the snipe tower control if you're not covering the flanks? As we've seen set up broken time after time after time, and it's going to come down to whoever has the ball in their hand last. That, that's really what this game is going to come down to. It's a 91-89 game with two and a half minutes left. I don't think we're going to see anybody go on a huge run here. It's really going to come down to slay after slay as we see Frozen trying to survive in the corner over there, jumping around as much as he can. Great beatdown, great play to survive and keep his team possession of the ball as they have a slight lead now with two minutes left to go. Tonzi, I had a quick question for you too. What do you think why, why don't these guys switch up their, their tactic and move somewhere else to hold this setup? It seems like both of these teams have very heavily practiced this elbow setup and the elbow green S tower setup. Why not move to, uh, you know, blue side? Why not go down to bottom blue? Well, what I got to say first is great double kill there picked up by Mitakali. That's going to give them some much needed ball time. And I think it just comes down to what we talked about earlier. The, the panic. The mm -hmm. unwillingness to let the other team get much control or any touches on the ball. Like I said, I think these guys are playing Slayer game modes. As Alec Kazoom comes back with his own nice double kill to break a good setup. But 105-104, a minute and a half left. It's, it's a Slayer game mode that we're watching right now, guys. And somebody's just getting a couple seconds on the ball in between deaths. And that's why we're not seeing anybody go for different setups because these guys have abandoned a, you know, looking for that 250 mark. And they're looking to just get a kill and get a touch, get a kill, and get a touch. And like I said, the last team who has the ball here, I think is going to be the winner. Yeah, I want to touch on that as well. Um, I don't think it's that they, they, they didn't want to try to control a blue setup. It's that everything is so hectic. They're two down, grabbing the ball. Two are spawning at blue or like at gold. I mean, there's no control. And here we go. There's a blue setup coming right now. So Todd are able to bring the ball there. If they're able to bring this into blue window, oh, they are able to bring it into blue window. This is where they can win the game here. Clear enemy can win the game here. They need to block oh. off top blue. Oh, yeah, but no. Now it's going to be in the hands of... Yeah, yeah. now it's going to be in reality check's hands. Oh, it no. This could be Kali right now. What a crucial time to get it. We talked about blue setup. Uh, Zip must have been looking into the future. That looks like where the this game is going to be decided. As Muta comes in, Serp with a great oh, kill. Goodness, huge. Great time Ooh. on the ball here. Run out of time. I see Frozen picking up a kill. This is a lead now for Frozen coming in. First early shots go the way of reality check. We're talking about 15 seconds left. They need it only for a couple more seconds. Spawns are so staggered. I think this is going to be, yep, this is a reality check oh, game. Triple, triple kill. Wow. By Medicali as he finishes on a killing frenzy. And like I said, the last team with the ball takes game three and oh a 2 God. 1 series lead. I've never seen an oddball match like that. I, I really have not. Even in the open divisions, there's bigger runs of ball time than what we just saw there. And I, I cannot wait to see these carnage reports with the amount of kills that probably went to both ways. Oh, I mean, 50 bomb. He killed by mid 50 bomb. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, don't look at Frozen over there. 40 and 28. He's still putting up a good fight. He kills between two players there. My and every goodness. And everybody combines for another 120. We're talking about 200 plus kills on one map. We're talking about 130-something points being the ball win score. Oh, what man. a match. Liquid Not was like Mike Tyson at the end there. Oh, my God. Absolutely. And I think we went back to our map preview accidentally there, what am us? Um, Sorry. My bad. Nope, you're good, my man. I just wanted to make sure you know. Not that it's a long preview <laughs> on Guardian. There's really only two things to watch out for. Uh, we didn't even need to put the ball in the picture there because both of those teams weren't even concerned with it throughout that entire match. They really weren't. <laughs> Reality that was insane. Check. Had the slightly better slays, but more important than that, Akali went on a 10 kill streak right there at the end. Massive triple kill. That blue setup that Zip talked about, that's where the room that they ran into. And I think the chaos of that game kept breeding more chaos because spawns kept staying staggered and nobody grouped up. Everybody was just rushing out to get another kill. And most of the time they were trading with somebody at least. So constantly there was a red X on the board. And if you see a red X and you, when you hit that back button, you pull up, you start getting aggressive. Nobody really slowed their team down there, but we're going to move off from the craziness of that map, and what are we going to next, What Us? Absolutely. Next up after that is Onslaught CTF. Let's take a little bit of a preview. It's Capture the Flag on Onslaught. A couple of different things to look out for here. Flags. You got that, uh, you got that mauler that, <laughs> you got that mauler that spawns there, but I mean, Five caps to win here on Onslaught Capture the Flag. 
Uh, got a little got a little uh, preview of the Mauler there. That's really the only quote unquote power weapon on the map. It, this is pretty much just you know who can get set up, who knows where the spawns are going to be, and uh, yeah, getting those five caps. The ultimate deep fake there. What to watch out for on this map though is positions. It's positioning, yeah. positioning, positioning. It's another heretic game mode almost. I think this map is a little bit more forgiving than heretic, but. These teams in a capture the flag game mode, they cannot afford to play Slayer first and objective second. You're not going to get away with it like you did on Oddball. Whoever plays the better objective game mode here is going to win this one. This, this one because Onslaught is all about that positioning. It's all about working the spawns to get the flag pool. You got to rotate through a couple kills to get a clean flag pool. If you get a good one, you may can do a double cap. I expect to see some good stuff from Reality Check here. I want to see Clear Enemy try to replicate what they did on Heretic, though, and bring the confidence from that game mode to this one. And I think we are ready to go whenever these guys are, if they're listening in the chat. Um, game, th game four. It's the crucial one. Uh, uh, Reality Check could take a 3-1 lead. That's great for their mental state. Real uh, Clear Enemy could bring it back to 2-2, basically make reset the series. And we could keep going back and forth all night. Uh, what do you think both of these teams are feeling after that crazy match on uh, Guardian Oddball, though? Invincible. Heart palpitations. Uh, I mean, both of all, <laughs> both teams are definitely feeling it. You know, Frozen coming out strong. I mean, you got Liquid coming out strong. I mean, uh, what I'm looking for here in this map is I'm looking for some discipline here. I'm looking for good positioning. I want somebody to be top mid. I want somebody to be top B, top A. I also want somebody to be on the house, and I don't want them to force what they were doing in that Guardian game. I don't want them to force flags when they don't need to. If they get three down and they see someone spawning up immediately, they need to reslay and pull the flag uh, with some discipline. And the teams that are going to be able to do that are going to be the ones that walk away with the win. Absolutely. And who are we riding along with first here? What am us? Oh, we're riding along right here with the OG Frozen and Monster Piano Man, who is KD Fearless. An Absolutely. Off -rip well, we see OG Frozen. Yeah. Taking that B control that we heard Invincible talk about. Moving down the ramp, looking to push into the base. On this map, you got to clear out your base first. You can't let somebody sit behind you and cause problems because that's going to mess up your spawns. And that's a great job by Reality Check to deal with the problem that was Frozen early on in the game but you can't sit deep into your base for too long or you're going to just be under pressure constantly taking nades as we see three down from reality check right now and map control early to the side of clear enemy kind of like what we saw on heretic ctf where they pushed out aggressively early and i want to see if clear enemy can keep that together this time though this is all about brs this is all about looking for those four shots that zip talks about and it's all about positioning and controlling the spots so let's take a listen in with liquid execute and reality check right now oh sorry monster piano man yep sir pinch with me two down right, two down yeah yeah three down get that last one go get one more slay there we go a side oh no i'm dead here i'm dead here never they spawn by the may One's bottom Flag. their base, one's bottom their base, front of their base now, and back to the bottom of their base. Going to the B side. Yeah, they spawn, they spawn B side. I got a shot on top B, it's frozen. Yep. Yeah. Frozen's dead, frozen's dead. Get a touch. Get a touch. Alcazoom's low. Fine. Alcazoom's dead, let's push up. Three dead, three dead, three dead. B corner dead. There's one shot. He's dead. They're flag right now. Flag's dead. All right, I'm taking it. A corner, a corner times two. She's slaying. Times three. Times three. There you go. Let's kill. Spawning in. Big corner. He got it on top of it. Four dead. I didn't think I could run it. They, they were spawning up. Two top B. Bottom middle. Alakazoom top B. Two top B. Uh, They're B street now. All right. Coming Runner out of that, base. listen in. Runner base. Uh, good back and forth. I think a little bit too aggressive on that earlier try to pull there on when it was the flag was sitting bottom mid. You heard a colleague call slay out one more time. But there was a rush for the flag. As we look on with clear enemies, they're the ones getting the touches, throwing the flag out right now. But both of these teams, it's just... They're, 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 it's it's two Slayer game modes once again here. I'm not seeing a whole lot of objective setups here. I'm seeing a lot of fights going on, a lot of 1v1s, um, and basically teams constantly having a red X on the board. I want to see who gets control of this map early. I think the first flag cap will kind of start 
changing how this map goes as we see Alakazoom with a great pull here. I saw four red X's on the side of Reality Check. This has to be a cap for Clear Enemy. And I believe it is. Yes, that's 1-0 to the way of Clear Enemy. Great job by them getting that flag cap and getting some control. Let's listen in with this squad right now. Shots on fearless. Our RB RB down, pushing RB stairs. We're four dead. Oh. Fuck, dude. Alright, just go. when you spawn, if you want tunnel, just go to their side. So I got dude. They're running at A side. They're running at A tunnel. Or A base. Get to their side. Basement. I have shots behind you muted. One shot behind you. One shot. B stairs. So one shot. Inner court also. Shots in the court. Yeah. A base. One shot. A base. One shot. Very sweet right now. Inner court. Inner court. I heard you A street. Uh, 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 Surf Tex. Oh, two, oh, two mid. Two bottom, bottom mid. Yeah, two on B. Two B mid. I got one of them. Two B mid. Last two B mid. Guys, last two B mid. We're all boy. I can't see. I can't see. I know. They're right. Two, two dead. What's the spawners then? I got they shots on Shaw. I got Vito. shots on Shaw. Spawning B. Spawning shots B. on Surf Tex. They're spawning B. They're spawning B. One B tunnel. One B corner. Their B corner. Liquid's weak. On their flag. One. On RB dump. RB dump. RB stairs. Running our flag now. I got shots on him. He's one shot, he's one shot. Flagger is one shot. Is he dead or no? No, no I said he's one shot. I thought the nade might have got him. Just free. stay alive. Two top, top B right now, no. I spawned off flag. Hold on, I can help you. Fearless has got shots. Top B. Top B is one. I have shots on B. I have shots on B. Guys, do we have cop? What's going on? They're B, they're B street one. You guys are B street one. Nice nade. I'm putting shots on everyone. Still the beat up. Coming out of that listen in, a little bit sloppy there from Clear Enemy towards the end because they never dealt with Fearless. Fearless sat by that flag, waited for another slay out, and got the pool. You know, he was called out. He said that he was one shot. Then he was forgotten about. Um, and that cost them there as a 2-1 lead goes to the side of reality check is it looks like whatever team we listen in with the other team is gonna be the one to pull Recursed. some flag caps there and i think you know i got a comment on the play i saw by frozen bottom mid with the nade at the base that nade was filthy it, it was a first class nade great iq play there and we're seeing reality check take some more control over this map but it doesn't seem like they're forcing the control. Oh. It just seems like a little bit of unorganization on the side of Clear Enemy as they're looking to go 3-1 now with this latest pull. 3-1 lead, double kill by Fearless, and he is catching all of the Clear Enemy players before they even know where he is. And that's what shows you that you have control. We see a killing spree going his way. Another double kill. He's racking up the medals right now. Let's go straight into a listening with this squad as they're flying high right now. No, no, A Street, A Street, he's weak. He's got a shot, powder. They're spawning A Street. Flag's dead, flag's dead. Slay. Nice. Last one in their A corner. Three dead. Three dead. Three bucks. Good shit, that's three down. Spawning A, spawning A, spawning A. Hey, spawning B corner now. Push B Street. Hard, times two. Yep, there's, there's three there, I got one of them. Two dead, frozen. Nice. Dead. Three dead. Take advantage, take advantage of this. Take advantage of this. One more slay, one more slay. Get up. Oh, one out. Oh, one out. Zoom's two shots. Yeah, they're all spawning a corner. Oh, shit. They're both nades on them. In the box, in the box, in the box, in the box. They're a corner. Nice. I need help, hey, hey, I need help. I'm here, coming I'm out here. of that listen and I gotta say maybe just a slight miss opportunity by fearless there He knew where the spawn was coming maybe an earlier nade could have caught them right off of the spawn But you know what have shoulda coulda there's still much better control going the way of reality check right now What do you see them doing right so far invincible? I mean they're they're having some discipline like I was talking about they're, they're pulling the flags at the exact time when they need to and they're taking map control They're making sneaky plays uh, getting through undetected and that's what onslaught's all about if you can get through to the enemy side being undetected I mean that's just gonna help you out no matter what that flag guy's gonna be running straight towards you No idea you're there easy four shot there And I mean plays can be made with that player on the opposite side of the map and then off that retake map control and set up for another cap 100 percent too. I think I think they're doing a really good job too of <clears throat> excuse me, of uh Tanzi was talking about chaos earlier. Um you know, there's a difference between chaos and urgency, and I think that I think that um you know execute and his team are really dialing in that urgency, meaning that they have a you know a 
set path and logic that they're trying to follow. Um, and they're doing it with urgency. It's with, with you know, with tact. Um, and it's not just, I'm going to slay out, right? I think they're doing that better. And that's why we're seeing this co this score here. Absolutely. And 3-1 early lead. Um, and Serp taking it to 4-1. And this is different than the Heretic one. And I, I've always believed that Onslaught is a little bit easier to get set up on. Uh, just if you start losing some of the chaos of it, I think you can get yourself organized a little bit easier than you can on Heretic. And we're seeing that lack of chaos start going in the favor of Reality Check. We've seen two out of the first three matches be pretty chaotic. And now we're starting to see what it looks like when Reality Check settles in. And they've got some good control over this map and some good control over this game. 4-1, do you see any way back for Clear Enemy Zip? Um, you know... They just need to do, uh, you know, what the other team is doing. They need to really dial in that that urgency as opposed to having that chaos. Um, they had good moves. They have good setups. Um, they have good shots. Just trust those things, right? Um, it is a very, it's a, it's a daunting task when you're this high up, um, but, or down that bad, right? But um, it's definitely doable. Absolutely. And we have a good... Good response here by Reality Check as their flag got pulled. You got to stay sharp here. We've seen in the championship division some t crazy turnarounds in these maps right now. Um, but I don't see Reality Check letting this one get away from them. Let's listen in with Reality Check right now. See how they're planning to close this one out. One shot underneath you. One shot underneath you, Chris. I was hoping you'd turn towards me. All right, the, our flag. Let's not let's not let's force pulls like that. It's fine, but let's just not force pulls. We got we got plenty to work with. Let's just get let's lead on the flag. Frozen dead. Force them to make some plays. Let's do it. They they got to be there's a corner. There's one A. There's two there A street. Top A dead. Bottom A. One top their base. Top their base going A corner. A box, look A box. I got a two, two dead. Pull it. Pull it. Coming to you, coming to you, coming to you. Slay out, make sure we're slaying. Spawn B? Yeah. yeah. Spawn B. Alright, I got top mid. Let's go! Let's go! Let's go! Let's fucking go! Let's come out of that listening, and I love what I just heard from Reality Check. Because they're not getting lulled into a sense of security. They are staying intense. They are staying strong. And they are keeping their foot on the gas. Because like I said, I think they discovered something there at the end of the Narrows game. And that is the pressure is in their favor. If they're pressuring this squad, they're going to be more in control. But it's still chaotic. It's still crazy. And something's got to find some organization going into these next couple of maps. What am us? Where are we going next, my friend? Excuse me, have my mic muted. Uh, right, <laughs> right, and right into it. We have the Pit Slayer. Let's take a little bit of a look at what we can expect from this. All right, guys, Slayer on the Pit. Big thing here: sniper rifle spawning every two and a half minutes. Almost more important, overshield spawning every two minutes. And my goodness, the rockets spawning every three minutes. These are the keys to winning a Slayer game on the pit. I'm sorry. I have to chuckle at what's going on in the chat right now. I love that Akali comes in here. Things that he's being talked about. We all know Akali's a know-it-all. We've been talking about it all night long. No, but I'm just messing around. After what you see there, Invincible, well, looking at those key things on the pit, is any one of them more important than the other? What do you think these teams are going to need to look to play around the most? I mean, for Slayer pit... We're looking at training side. We're looking at sword side. Um, I'm looking for uh, OS control, sniper control as a priority. And uh, rockets, if you can get them, if you can get them in the sword, you can make huge plays over there. Just being sneaky, getting easy uh, plays into the sword. But, I mean, with all the power weapons and OS on that low side, that training side, most teams take advantage of the bridge, have one person looking for the flank, either green training, and then push and have one person on the enemy tower or in the sword and just causing mayhem and all the angles and catching the enemy team on a spawn trap. That's what I'm Ab looking for on the pit. Absolutely. And Zip, why don't you remind the audience what we saw from 
the madman frozen himself last time he found himself with a sniper rifle on this map. Yeah, reality check is going to have to watch that. Um, frozen, I believe, was it a was it a rampage? Yes, it was. Yes. So frozen yeah. last week went on a rampage almost to perfection, uh, sitting S two the entire match was just peeling scalps, like literally collecting scalps uh, from any part of the map that he could get his eyes on. And um, I'm excited to see if he can get if they're going to give him that again. You know for a fact. You know for a fact that clear enemy is like, all right, everyone make a beeline for the sniper, make sure Frozen grabs it, and then roll out from there. You know, that's that's got to be their opening strat at this point. Absolutely, and we are ready to go whenever you guys are, Akali. And I'm so sorry to all the Infinite Ducks in the chat for continuing to bring up those oh, painful <laughs> memories. I just suggest Aww. you maybe close your eyes for this match in case Frozen starts going off again. I don't want you guys to have to experience any PTSD from this map, yep. but... I think we're going to see a good back and forth match. Clear enemy's got to prioritize that sniper control. Reality check's got to prioritize that sniper control. And I think this is going to be a very slow paced match. Who are we riding along with along with first here, one of us? We are doing what we always do in flipping perspectives. We are back to Alakazoom and Liquid Execute. And we are on here with Alakazoom. Absolutely. Let's listen in with Clear Enemy right off the spawn here. Let's do it. On our training right now. Shots are training. Training's one shot absolute. I got killed by their sniper though. He's dropping for custom, dropping for custom now. He's weak in green. He has rockets. Shots on liquid. Nice. He has rockets out there green. They have rockets there green. Yeah. I got their rockets. I got rockets. Nice. You're insane. Just come back. Just come back. Just come back. Okay. I'm going along. I'm going. I'm just gonna hold long. I'm gonna hold the banana between like training and green. I need help. Yeah. Yeah. Push back. Push back. One push in green. Trap help. Yep, I'm dead as rain. Out green. Nice. He's out our long. Out, out our needles. Out our needles. He's got a revolve. There's only one left. Oh, well, one gonna shot the absolute their training, bro. Fucking green. Damn. Uh, what was, how did I just. It was on my own. Coming out of that lesson in. Remember when I said I think this is going to be a slow paced match, Invincible? I was wrong. Yeah. <laughs> so, what do you see from both of these teams starting out right now? I mean, I see a reality check coming for the throw, coming for the jugular, and I see clear enemy just. You, you heard in those comms a lot of frustration. I mean, we've got two gooses loose right now. I mean, it's just out mayhem, but. Reality check doing exactly what I said, man. Just having somebody in the sword, having a roamer, you know, be, keep the pressure up on that S tower side. One person on training, and they're just holding the mid bridge position and just not letting clear enemy get past the 50. And that's exactly what you want to see on team uh, Slayer on the pit. And I mean, yeah. Yeah, and I think, I mean, you've got to believe they know what Frozen can do with the sniper rifle, and you can't just let that team sit and be comfortable on their side. They can't afford a slow-paced game mode here. They saw what they did when they picked it up on Narrows and really took it to them, and it's it's starting to work for them here as they have an earlier <laughs> lead on this one as we see some crazy back-and-forth kills going. Let's take a listen in with uh, Akali and the rest of Reality Check right now um, and see how they're doing. One minute training. Yeah, one, 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 one shot for training. Oh fuck, he's gonna have. You got custom. You got custom. I got assassinated. Yep. It's fine. You got. You got it. You right, got it. Like one our training. Our training now. Our training yep. now. Training's got shots. Yo, our sword nades. Weak. All right, hey. Cypher's our our training. Out. One shot runway. One, one shot runway. Custom gun, you guys. Absolute. Our needle pit. All right, we got. 20 he's dead. He's dead. He's dead. He's dead. Our training weak. Our training's weak. Fuck. Just a jump. All right, Rocket's coming up to 11.56. Weak third training. Weak third yep, training. two, uh, two hey, weak third training. Hey, they're long. They're long to their green. They're long to their green. I'm pushing through green. That was good. That was good. These snipes up. I'm grabbing. Rocket. Tatter's going to be in their needle pit. One shot. One shot. Uh, fucking one shot in their training. All right, let's chill. Shot there, back, up, shot there, back up, sir. Back up, Shaw. Back up. Uh, I got hit by nades. It's a bounce report. All right, that's fine. What time did you say right. uh, Rockets were? Coming out of that listen in. Okay. Before. All right. So I think Clear Enemy had a plan at the beginning of this game. They wanted to kind of play it like they did in the semifinals. Reality Check wouldn't let them do it. And now they've adjusted and closed the gap and played just as aggressively as Reality Check has, playing with a little bit more confidence. I like seeing the slays, but a great grab of the Rockets here by Mitakali. Let's see if he can use this to help get some more control. We've seen him pick up some crucial kills with him early on. Good nades coming in. Alakazoom hitting some great BR shots against the opposing team. Serp with a good double kill, though. Tower takes out Serp. Kind of a wasted rocket shot there, but a three-kill lead right now from Reality Check. What has 
clear enemy done better that you've seen in the last couple of minutes? Zip. Um, you know, they've really just started focusing on, uh, you know, flipping that script, right? So you said they came out first on the reality check side, really pushing hard across that midline, making sure the Frozen wasn't going to have that power weapon, right? Uh, they adjusted to that. Uh, they grabbed the custom and they flipped, uh, flipped the switch, basically. And now they're playing just as aggressive back, uh, which really makes it difficult, uh, you know, if there's two aggressors to be, you know, on top or, you know, be coming out on top on that right uh so i think they're doing a great job here of of answering back um and i think we're in for a treat yeah a little bit of control now going the way of reality check again as you got to think it's hard for you to play away from your game pan game pan your game plan for too long if you are uh clear oh, enemy as a great no scope by mid akali and now some power weapon control. We saw them utilize that rockets to start breaking off the pressure. They grabbed custom. They have a sniper now. And now they have a 10 kill lead. And this is what you were talking about, right, Invincible? Those power weapons control. Getting those things under your arm so that way you can control the map. And that's what they're doing really well right now, isn't it? Yeah. I mean, look at it. It's pitcher perfect right here. He got liquid execute on their S2. This is exactly what you want to see. Oh, but he's taken out by Alex Zoom. That was a bad... Bad death there, but I mean, you still have pressure in the sword, and I, I think um, Reality Check's just going to run away with this one. They were able to get the last custom, so they know exactly when the custom's up. I believe it was 1042. Uh, fresh sniper now in the hand of Liquid Execute. You don't want to see that. You have enemy or Reality Check players in the flag. Oh, they get taken out here. Only, only, uh, I mean, eight. Let's see. I can't do math. 12 kill lead, maybe 13. I can't do math. Someone help me out here. <laughs> but I mean, you struggle with that, five left. Bird, my friend. <laughs> But yeah, five kills though. The the similarity between this match and what we saw on Narrows, right? We saw a kind of slower start, a mid game that went the way of Clear Enemy, and then Reality Check really putting the pressure on. What I have to say though is this match is totally different than what we saw in the semifinals for Clear Enemy. Frozen has not been able to have the impact on it like he did in the semifinals, and that's why we see the 10 kill lead that we see here for Reality Check. We see Frozen still with 16 kills. But the rest of the team isn't being able to set up as comfortably as they did last time. For every kill that Frozen's getting, Reality Check is picking up one or two teammates. They're one kill away from a 4-1 series lead. Who's going to be the one to pick it up as it's been a great fight here? As Towers pushed way up, Frozen goes down. A 50-40 to 40 win for Reality Check. A great kill spread there as we see 15, 14, 12, 9. That was a great job by that squad. Putting the pressure on as a team. Building off of their early start, not getting discouraged when Clear Enemy closed the gap, and just playing their game all the way through. Respect to reality, I mean, to Clear Enemy there. They fought, they tried to stay alive, but once again, we're seeing the slaying power of reality check be the bigger difference in this series. And now we're looking at a 4 1 Invincible. What does that tell you right now? I mean, 4 1, I think they think the, the game's over. You already have people leaving the game. Um, but, I mean, 4-1, I mean, clear enemies came back before, you know. So, I mean, I don't want to uh, completely take them out. But, I mean, after that loss, it's 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 kind of hard to keep your mental state in there. But, I mean, you have to. Next next map is King of the Hill on Construct. And, I mean, they're going to have to just, just forget about all the losses, forget about everything. Just keep one game at a time. Just win, 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 win. That's all I need to focus on coming into this next game. Absolutely. And speaking of King of the Hill Construct, let's take a little bit of a look at what we can expect from this map and game mode. Construct, King of the Hill. Big thing here, sniper rifle. Again, spawning every two and a half minutes. You got the rockets up there at R1 or R2 spawning every three minutes. I can't remember. Overshield spawning every two minutes down there. First team to 250 points gets the win. Is it R1 or R2 that the rockets are on? I can't That's remember. I think it's, R2. I think it's, 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 it's R2 like in the R2. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Floor. Okay. This, this, is, this is why like I don't play anymore. But judging us a lot on uh, the no, inside. No, no, judging, no judging. <laughs> See, no, that's this why we're is, in the this booth. Is why, yep, this exactly. is why we're here, my friend. I'm, a we can just I'm just the producer. The we'll talk about the glory days that were season <laughs> one. Um, but yeah, that was... There's actually some key things to look out for on this map. The top control on Construct is crazy. We're going to see a little bit of... Dare I say it once again, chaos on this map. I really think so. I think it's going to turn into wave after wave going after the hill. If it's not that, I think Reality Check has a chance to 
become the champion in this map. But if it's wave after wave once again, anything's possible. We saw a crazy Guardian Oddball. We know this map is Banana Lands as well. It's a little bit bigger of a map. I mean, even my dog Duke is probably going to wake up for this one because it's going to be that crazy with the control that these teams are going to be fighting for. And if you guys are listening in, you guys are ready to start whenever you're good to go. I want to see Clear Enemy be aggressive here off of the spawn. I want to see them take that aggressiveness, but I want to see them translate it into objective control. Mm -hmm. We've seen the chaos continue on that side of the match, and we've seen reality checks start to settle in more. Clear Enemy has yeah. to respond to that, but if any team can bounce back with their back against the wall, it's these guys, because they've done it once, they can do it again. They've won four in a row before. That's what we're asking of them now. Let's mm -hmm. see if they can do it. Yes, Ghost Kill, this is Halo 3. Yeah, and they are coming off of that uh, that loss there, right? Uh, Reality Check has to have all-time high confidence right now. They might be able to use that to their advantage, right? Making sure that uh, just because, you know, the other team thinks that you're down and out, you know, be that be that tortoise, you know what I'm saying? Don't be the yes. hare. Tortoise. Be the turtle, baby. It's the it's a long race. We're at the end of the long race. The season is now one game away from being over. Who are we riding along with? What of us? We are riding along right now with OG Frozen. On, on the other side, we will have Monster Piano Man, otherwise known as KD Fearless. Absolutely. And we see Fro Frozen's going to be the key on this one. He's got to be the IGL for Clear Enemy here. He's got to keep them going. Great job by Fearless there, getting the sniper rifle off the map. He had it in his hands. He walked it right to the edge. Little things like that help you take control in a map like this, as now rockets are in the hands of Reality Check. There's no power weapons for Clear Enemy, and that early control that we talk about seems to be in the hands of Reality Check, even though they're slightly behind on the scoreboard. So let's listen in with Fearless and Reality Check um, right here off the, uh, off the get-go. Get up, uh, fear, fear, lift. Okay. Hey, CT one shot. Frozen's dead. I'm lifting. I got hey, another one on R1 somewhere. R1. I'm looking for open. Oh, so you need an R1. I'm dropping. One shot open. Uh, open street drop. Go O3 again. That's probably O2. Lobby R2. Two and one shot O2. So R1 now. O2 again. Frozen, he's got shots. I got shots. Drop for hill. I have shots. Oh, there's, there's multiples in hill. Remember camo 13. What? Lobby one shot. It's uh, it's custom. It's not camo. Yeah, it's custom. For, uh, it's camo for Slayer. R1, R1, R1. Yep, I'm fucking yeah, 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 Gotta get, yeah, gotta yeah, get. Yeah. Yeah. New Hill, New Hill at 13. Yep. And you need to get up top. A couple scraps. Drop into Hill. Drop into Hill. Alright, coming out of that listening. Right now, here. Not necessarily the comms I wanted to hear from Reality Check there. Their success has come from their just going for the jugular, right? Going for the kill. They're letting Clear Enemy get some early control here. And that could be something that comes back to bite them later in the game. We've seen some super close uh, hill games here throughout the playoffs. A 40 kill lead off the start is exactly what Clear Enemy was probably hoping for. But now they have to see what they can do on the top side of the map. What's different about controlling top side as compared to bottom side, Invincible? Uh, but yeah, so I was just about to touch up on that. So I mean the bottom hill and the top hill are completely different setups uh, For the top hill here you mainly want to just hold gold Someone needs to be at top gold at all times blocking spawns making sure that you're able to watch the closed street open street pushes from either R1 and I mean you just need that presence someone there uh, The spawns are what is most important when you got that top hill just spawning your teammates either top gold or closed street is just super crucial with the top hill the bottom hill I mean you want somebody in sword at all times or in lobby um, and those are like the key factor, key positions uh, as well. Um, so here we're on board with Candy Fearless, going up open ramp here. See, so yeah, he, I, I would like to see someone on his team control gold here. Let's see if they're able to stay alive. They are. They need to send one person back to top gold, on, and they're all dead. And now it looks like Clear Enemy is spawning gold, and this is a great position for Clear Enemy to keep racking up some time. Absolutely, and the reason the better spawns are going the way of Clear Enemy right now, the re reason we see a lot of blue X's, uh, blue team X's on the map is because Frozen has a sniper. He's on a killing spree. He's controlling that gold lobby super well, and that's what this team needs. We called him as the IGL. He's stepping up in this game, and that early big start from Clear Enemy is being built on now with some good open side control, 
and you oh my what god. a no scope oh my god Bob frozen as he stays calm hits the shot and he goes down oh. there with the shot but a great spree a great response Frozen's going to have to keep this level up throughout this match. He's going to have to help his teammates continue to get their confidence going. We know Alakazoom, Muted, and Tauter are fantastic players. They're probably feeling a little bit low right now. Let's listen in with Clear Enemy and Frozen. See how this squad is doing after their great start here. 53. Like 53. Nah. And he'll weep. Behind you. I got yeah. hill, Frozen. I got hill. Phil, talk to me here. I got him. I got him. I got him. It's fine. It's fine. It's fine. All right. I'm yeah. playing R2. Somebody grab sword so they don't spawn there. Uh, Dude, for, 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 basement, they're all in hill, in, in hill. Charles one shot, Charles one shot in hill. He's river, river. Okay, oh, another one river. Still river shot, still river shot. R1 in open street. Oh, watch out, they're up top. One just start behind you, Bill. I heard you, I heard you. They're both in hill, both in hill. I don't know where he's at. Yeah, yeah, they're nading you, they're nading you. Just play for help. They're both looking at you. There's three people in hill now. He's gonna lift close, he's about to lift close. Liquid, you got a shot in him. I got it like no. No. Lobby, lobby. You're good, Chris. I'm gonna do your CT. Oh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I got hill. I got hill. He's river still one. Lobby. I got nade on river. I got nades on river. Too. They're all I got one. Nice. I got one. That's, uh, Surptex is I'm river. Hill. Too, I'll be in hill. I'll be in hill. I'll be in hill. No River, river, river. Surptex. Sword, sword, sword. Sword dropping. Sword dropping. One more. Open side. What's our custom timer? It's 53. It's a, minute it's a minute away. Like 47 is like 47. It's, it's... Puppy, man. I've been healed. I've been healed. I killed him. I killed him. Guys, one's dropping on you. One's dropping on you. Both right, two legs. Coming out of that, listen in. I gotta say, Frozen is kind of a different type of IGL. He, he's kind of like that rock on this team. A quiet Frozen is sometimes a dangerous Frozen because this man can slay with the best of them. He's done it before. He has the experience. Great job by Clear Enemy here. That early run that they went on, they've used that as the cushion to keep the separation throughout this match so far. They've maybe added a little bit more to it over the time as well. And that's why that big start was so crucial for them. And maybe something that Reality Check should have looked to kind of pressure a little bit harder, don't you think, Invincible? Yeah, so I think the big turning point was when the hill was on open street and... Um, uh, reality check lost control of the gold spawns and gold control once that was possible once uh, um, Clear enemy was able to take that it was just they're just steamrolling at this point But now looks like reality check able to come back and, and try to maybe uh, crawl back into this game Surf needs to win that good win there now his teammate needs to stay in lobby go to sword Maybe get some sword spawns some lobby spawns for the close street hill Absolutely if Reality Check is going to want to win this match, though. They're going to have to go through Frozen. As I see him racking up medal after medal on the other side. And if he keeps doing this, it's going to keep setting up things for his teammates as well. Great kill there by Frozen. But he goes down. Good trades going the way of Reality Check right now as we see them close the gap. Oh. That close side hill is so difficult. Fearless with the double kill. He's being dangerous with the sniper rifle. He's the one trying to move along and give his team good spawns right now with this closed hill, and that's so crucial. But Rocket's in the hands of Frozen right now as he's looking to pick up a reality check player and help get his team a little bit more control. Great kill there by on Mitakali. He's got one Rocket left. Being patient here. Waited for Shaw to come around the corner. I love that patience. He waited for the other player to come to him. He knew he was one shot, but Fearless on the other side, picking up double kills, really locking down that closed hill. And if you're clear enemy, you got to be thankful that the majority of the hills you're going to see are going to be that open bottom side because they're really struggling with this close side hill right now. I mean, it's it seems like they can't get these top hills under control. I mean, they were able to get that open side, but the close street, they seem to be having trouble. And I want to say that uh, Rally Check was getting kind of lucky on the spawns there. They got a lot of top gold spawns, I want to say, and just able to just keep them out of the hill, keep spawning them on the streets and they were able to just control most of that close street hill. Uh, Frozen here in a great position. I love this position here with the sniper, open street, just overlooking to see where the enemy teams are, watching the lifts, making sure no one's able to get up, sneak into lobby, pushing R1 here. This is a great position as well with the sniper. Uh, I would like to see him pushing the sword and maybe just, or C2, C3, yep, going up the close street now. Uh, let's see if he can get a peel here. I want to say they spawn in lobby. I'm not exactly sure. That's where the shots are coming from. I yep. see a fearless moving towards close side. Ooh, but shot. great job by Frozen being a, a kind of almost a distraction here. You know, people underestimate 
how important surviving is. People underestimate just how important being on the map is. As he's caused problems, he's kept Reality Check from being able to be patient. Great beat down there on Medicali. As the dude is like a real-life sniper rifle. He's not staying in the same spot for anything longer than two seconds. Oh he takes it as well. Wow. He's looking for Liquid Execute on that hill. But he needs a little bit from his teammates there. Great job by Tauter picking up that double kill. Great Overwatch being performed by Frozen at the moment. But like you talked about, Invincible, we're seeing those lobby spawns coming for Reality Check. Frozen eventually goes down, but you got to say fantastic job by him. We're seeing Alakazoom control that lobby now. And Tauter doing a great job moving around the map as we're seeing a lot more red X's on the blue team's side right now than the red team. As the bottom hill, seem, the bottom hill is definitely what... Uh, clear enemy is playing around right now. Is that going to be enough for them to win this match? I don't know. That bottom hill is always fishy. In my experience, you got to get some control on the top side because the top side is just where the bigger runs come from. Zip, what has your experience been on like King of the Hill when you've had success on the bottom hill but not much success up top? Um, I mean, I think the clear enemy has a great team set up for that sort of dominance on the bottom hills simply because they have frozen on their team right someone that is that proficient with the sniper rifle sitting on the sniper spawn isn't necessarily a bad thing especially when you're kind of rewarded for it for a third of the game right yeah um so you know i think that that's why you're seeing them push that more there but both of these teams are also adopting the the idea of you know no free points right We're, we aren't seeing any really big runs other than the first run that we saw by Clear Enemy in the very beginning of the game, um, so yeah, I think I think that that for Clear Enemy, those bottom hill matches are going to work a little bit better for their team build out. Yes, and while you're talking about that, what a play yeah, by Frozen wow. and a little VM there too. Following you, following him up that lift, that is such a crucial play because that took a, a overshield right off the map. I mean, that was a wasted overshield. By reality check, that was an aggressive play. Frozen is playing like a man possessed right now. And props to the rest of uh, Clear Enemy right now. Frozen's setting up the map, but the rest of the team is the one who's having to get those objective points. They're doing a pretty good job of that so far. They maintain a 30-point lead, but the hill's top side right now. They're going to need to build a cushion here because they struggled with that close side hill last time. And if they can get, you know, if they can maybe maintain that 30, 40 point lead going to the next bottom side hill. I really feel good about Clear Enemy taking this one, but they're gonna have to stay organized. Let's listen in with Frozen and Clear Enemy how they're approaching the last couple minutes of this match. Yeah, we don't have anyone watching close. You are one, one shot, one shot R2. Behind you, muted. R2, one, 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 shot one, 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 one shot behind you, Frozen. Frozen. Absolute. You just live. Uh, Not that guy, the other <laughs> Damn. You still killed him, you fucking god. One shot sword. Oh, he's hot, what? Hello? Help me in hill, help me in hill. I'm lifting open, I'm lifting open right now. One shot in hill! Absolute in hill! I'm looking, I'm looking. Push him, just push him, he's weak. I'm one shot, one shot, close street, close street, close street. Nice, I smoked that, that looked close. Lobby, lobby, There you go, there you go. One shot, there you go. One shot, C3. One shot, I got him. I got him. Good shit, dude. Close street, close street, last guy. One shot, close street, weak. He's pushing C3 right now. I have custom 48, 47. Nice, 47. I got hill, I got hill. Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna lift close. Inhale. Our one's dead. One more hill, one more hill, one more hill. Get those racks, get those racks. There's no racks. There are racks. I got hill. Oh my god, I went in there. Okay, alright. I don't know what that's for. That's for that. Bait set, bait set! I need help. I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. I have rocks, I have rocks. Just. I died with rocks. Watch your river, watch your river. Um, Rocks are O2, they need to be reloaded. Oh shit. One shot river. He's, he's one shot hill. Chris. I got him, I got him. I'm going for rockets. Coming no, out of that listen in. If reality check can yeah, take anything yeah. away from this match, it's to watch their back when they go up close lift because <laughs> Frozen is yeah. there right behind them. But you hear that you hear it on the comments from that squad. Frozen is all over the map right now. His team is feeding off of that energy. They're doing a good job getting that hill time that they need here on the bottom side because it's gonna be one minute of close time left. When it shifts again, I don't know if that's going to be enough for reality check. I think Clear Enemy's done a good job here, but they have to get uh, reality check off the hill. They're in a good little setup right now. They're getting a good run. 
every second counts for them at this point because they got to feel confident going into the closed side hill. Uh, what are you expecting to see here in the final seconds, Invincible? Uh, I like what I see out of clear enemy. And man, Frozen is just playing. I mean, not su no surprises there. I mean, this guy's just doing it all. He's getting kills. He's, he's forcing spawns for his teammates. He's, he's disciplined, getting his shields back before he challenges. Um, I want to see him uh, go out, lift up right here in the close. He does not need to contest this bottom hill. Uh, he should definitely have just lifted up right there. And unfortunately, so it may have, you know, forced his teammates to spawn mid goal, may not have. Uh, I don't think they spawned close street because um, reality check was on the close street. So good job of reality check. They're doing exactly what I wanted Frozen to do. Uh, so maybe reality check can swing this one back and win this game here. 50 seconds left. Frozen in the lobby, making sure to clear out sword here. Trying to get lobby spawns for his team. Able to get a kill on Shaw. Yep. Gets taken down, and I don't know. We'll, we'll see what's going on. Yeah, let's look on. Let's look along with Fearless right now. He's the one in the hill. 20 second lead. It's going to come down to the final seconds here. And once again, we're seeing this close side control be the difference maker. Red X popping up on open side over there as we see Frozen move in. Shaw it's takes him out. It's a lead now for Reality Check, and they're the ones in control. Close side is the difference at the moment. The lobby spawn. Great kills there by Towter, but Liquid Execute takes out Alakazoom. Shaw takes out Towter, and now it's gonna be reality check. They're gonna be your champions here in the championship Jeez. division. They played their game all series long. They got organized. They knew what they needed to do to win this match, and they dominated close side. They played around their success point, and what a fantastic job by that squad, the biggest of GGs to Mitakali Shaw, GGs. all of those guys over there on Reality Check, as they are your Season 2 PHCL Championship Division <laughs> champions. Let's go, boys. <laughs> listening in. You got, you got to make sure you, yeah, let's listen in with them. Yeah, that's, that's it. it. That's it. Just get that series. Oh, my God. I only had to pee four times that fucking series. <laughs> <Good>. <laughs> Oh man, you absolutely love to see it. What a game and what a series. Absolutely. I mean, we talk about it all the time here in the booth. We've seen so many games this season in the championship division, the premier division, the open division. The final series score doesn't necessarily speak to how close a match oh God. we just saw there between both of these squads. And as one of us takes us through the lovely map that we just witnessed once more. No, I'm just kidding. But a fantastic job by these teams putting on a great show. My heart goes out to Clear Enemy. We've been there. I mean, being a Season 1 player, I've been there before. I know how heartbreaking it is to lose. Not in the finals, but to lose there in the playoffs when everything you're working for is so close. They, they did a great showing. They came out swinging like you wanted to see them do. But... Reality Check just got a little bit more organized as that series went on. And we talked about it before the game. That was going to be the difference maker in the series. And they made sure it made a difference. I mean, what are you taking away from what you just saw there, Invincible? I mean, Reality Check just being in the right positions, the right place at the right time in that last map. And I mean, they were doing it all on all of the maps. I mean, it just seemed like they knew exactly what to do at the right times. Their timing... Um, was they were being disciplined, liquid playing out of his mind. I mean, but you got to give it up to to um, Frozen on the on um, uh, clear enemy man, just trying to do it all, trying to crawl back, do everything in his power. And I mean, a lot of the matches were close; they weren't like steamroll matches. So I mean, they could have went either way. I just think a little bit of mistakes here and there uh, really cost them a couple maps. But I mean, take away from that, I mean, it's still a great series. Everything was kind of close. I didn't know who was gonna win. Absolutely, Absolutely. Huge. And I'll be right back. I'm going to see if we can set up a post-game interview with our champions real quick. So uh, give me five seconds, and I will be back. Sounds good. Man, I, I'm i still reeling after that. Just the, that last-second comeback on King of the Hill. I feel like I've... It seems like something that shouldn't happen, but I feel like I, I've seen it before, like at least a couple of times, that last-second really push, in, even just in this league. You know, and it's so funny how that something like that could swing like that. Yeah. Construct is one of those maps where it's really easy to let your foot off the pedal there, uh, especially near the end. Um, and, you know, it's heartbreaking to see uh, that, you know, Reality Check just had the more patient game type, right? They had the more patient gameplay. They waited for their time uh, and methodically struck at the, at the perfect moment, right? And um, 
that's they ultimately took the championship because of that. Seriously, I don't I don't think the scoreboard does justice to just how close most of these games were. Oh, they're they're literally yeah. the only thing that separates them is is nothing mechanical. I'd have to agree. Uh, reality check able to I mean, like I said, I was I was trying to to tell Frozen send him some mental to, to lift up in the C three there. May have changed the end of the game there. I didn't know if there was reality check members already on close street or if they were spawning on close street. But if he lifted up close there instead of fighting that guy by the hill, he could have potentially spawned his whole team uh, close street. And they also got gifted with the lobby spawn there at the end, man. I mean, they had an, another opportunity to try to, to tie or win the game and just not able to close it out. Uh, maybe send a guy R2 um, instead of pushing through C3. I didn't. I don't think uh, anyone tried to go R2, but I think Liquid was there to stop him. Uh, but man, what a what a crucial clutch ending there from Reality Check, making Absolutely. sure to take control of that close street. Huge. Ladies and gentlemen, stick around. Make sure you stick around because we will be doing an interview with the winners of the championship division finals here on the PHCL. Should be getting them in in just a minute. But uh, it, it's almost hard to speak. Just uh, my, my heart was <laughs> going that entire time, guys. Mm -hmm. There was there was some really, really uh, solid plays made there. Uh, I definitely learned something every single time I watch someone like Frozen or Liquid uh, play. So... All around a great, great experience and makes me look forward to season three. Absolutely. So while we get this uh, interview set up, let's take a little bit of a look from our sponsors, our own merch store. <laughs> take a look, ladies and gentlemen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. Uh, if you enjoy what you just saw, a beautiful best of nine series between Reality Check and Clear Enemy, and you want to support your favorite team, check out our merch store and uh, support the league by buying some of your favorite team's merch. That's, yeah, you know what? I own a, I own a jersey myself. Uh, honestly, really, really well-made material. Uh, great graphics. Everything is on there. It's not tacky at all. It's a serious... It's a serious jersey. Uh, it's like you would go buy a baseball or basketball jersey in a in a sports shop, right? <clears throat> I've seen the jerseys that they wear, and I'm I'm not gonna lie, I'm I'm trying to make a team and join the the PHCL and get my own jersey. You know what I'm saying? Get my own team swag going on. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Or buy one of my own. The swag is there, and we have the entire uh, reality check team the whole ready team. to hop in on the interview. Um, so I'm going to ping them and let them know that they can come in. What am I, can you expand our, our amount of people that we can allow into this channel? Um, real yep, quick, give me, give I think we have second. all five of them coming in. Um, and I'm going to ping them as soon as we are ready to go. Uh, as they are all quite excited after a oh, fantastic it's season. Already, I think we're already good. All right. Nine users. We're good to go. All right. As yep. we show the entire stream that we have. At the correct limit. I'm just messing with you. <laughs> um, uh, South Park took care of us, so I just pinged them. Um, I'm going to let them know to come on in, and we'll do a quick interview with the guys as they are. They're going through little face cam reveals of themselves as they're, they're, they're talking on camera for the first time, getting to know each other. Uh, I mean, man, it's got to be exciting. We heard it from Eclipse last season how excited they were whenever they had the opportunity to win a championship, and it's a great feeling. I mean, it's the PHCL. These guys worked hard for it. As we have the lobby filling up. Let's go. And we are Welcome. To play your championship division champions. The one, the only reality check squad. Congratulations, guys. I'm going to clap it up for you real quick because it was a fantastic series. It was a fantastic season. And, I mean, I guess I'll just start it off. I'll, I'll, I'll go to you, Fearless, to start off. 
what does it feel like to to win a season based league? I mean, you guys have all had some maybe tournament experience. You've all been around the Halo scene for a while, but this was something a little bit different. And yeah, it's a community based league. It's not, you know, the HCS. It's not a huge thing, but it's a season long thing that you guys grinded for over the period of ten to twelve weeks. What does it feel like to walk away as a champion? It it feels great. You know, we had ups and downs throughout every series, including that one, you know, where there was times where we would have probably lost it because of one simple dumb play or, you know, not really thinking outside the box. And over over time, over practicing, whether it's eights, whether it's us scrimming, for instance, like we were doing Lionheart Gold, you know, we would take a premier team that, you know, we're friendly with and practice with them. Because, you know, like they say, the only way you're going to get better is when you play the better people. Regardless if even though they didn't make playoffs and they got stomped on by some of the teams, it doesn't matter. They're still better than us in in certain ways that we need to improve on. So every time we play them and every time we play eights, we go over everything that we did wrong. Sometimes we took notes. We learned about timers and whatnot so that we can get that on point. You know, we we made sure that we could each be on at certain times so that we can practice more, you know, Absolutely. regardless if it's customs or matchmaking, you know, time, time you just you got to have the time, put yeah. it in, put it in with your teamwork and make sure that everyone's on the same page and you'll do For just sure. fine and never, ever give up on yourself. Because once Dude, you give it. up For on sure. yourself during a tournament or this, you're going to fail. Because you don't have no self-confidence in yourself. You need that self-confidence regardless if you're a great player or a really crappy player. It doesn't matter. Mm-hmm. Just have, have confidence in yourself. Anyone can do it as long as they put their mind to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. And speaking as a really crappy player, confidence is still key for me. I mean, if I go in feeling good, I play a lot better even though I'm still crappy. But yeah, talking about a season-based league and having that chance to grow together as a team, having that chance to develop and learn, you guys definitely are a different team now at the end of the season than you were when this team was first put together after the kind of incident with Lion Hart White. Shaw, other than me asking you to be the new face of the PHDL modeling scheme, <laughs> talk to me through what it was like to, to play in this championship series. Talk me through some of the matches. Was there anything that stood out to you? Anything that you kind of took away from that series? Did it feel any different? Or, or, or just talk to me through that experience tonight. Yeah, no, it was awesome. And I want to give a huge shout out to uh, Spartan because if it wasn't for him, I wouldn't be in the league. So uh, Spartan, thanks for bringing me in. Um, And my big takeaway from the league and getting in the series is one, it's fun to be competitive, but it's also fun to have friends. And I haven't got to play Halo 3 competitively since like 2009-ish. So coming back and and getting to meet you guys and play with you guys has been a blast. And um, the competition and the intelligence that some of the players have, like Fearless and Mid and just Trajan and guys throughout the league, it's been great to listen to like how they call out, their tactfulness, their calmness. Um, it's just been a joy all the way around. So I've, I've enjoyed it. I look forward to playing more competitive games if possible. Fantastic, man. Well, it's been great having you guys all here. Uh, I'm going to go over to you, Akali. We were riding along with your perspective a lot tonight, and I think we were all having like similar thoughts and questions in our head during the Game 3 oddball match. Because I, I was about to say, please tell me. It's crazy. <laughs> And we've never oh, seen really no. an oddball game like that. Kind of walk us through what that game mode was like. It was a 1-1 series at that point in time. Yeah. You guys had just suffered a you know, close loss on Heretic. You bounced back strong on Narrows. And then you were in a dogfight on oddball. And we saw a back-and-forth game. We, we even said it in the booth. We talked about it being a Slayer match that had an oddball on it. Yeah, That's what it looked like. So talk us through that map for us. So uh, one thing is, I hope you only saw a couple of my jump offs. Uh, that is <laughs> has been a thing we've been making, we've been making fun of slash yelling at Shaw for constantly jumping off every time. Every time, I think I fell off five times that game. Um, but Oddball has been our weakness uh, for the most part, and we we had we had a couple specific maps that we looked at to where uh, when, specifically when we we fought the Ducks, we were looking at okay, we have certain maps where we 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 can outslay them and we can force that to win the game uh, a lot of the time. Other times, like on Narrows or whatever, we were, we were struggling to, like, to put it out and I ended up in a tie. Guardian Oddball, we always had issues with when to play the ball, where to go, where to slay, all that stuff. And so we just shot people a bunch. <laughs> and so yes, early against the Ducks, I think, I think uh, um, it was me and Shaw who had 
almost 90 combined kills and a mm -hmm. loss. Um, and that was a huge wake-up call for me. And it's something we, could, we can't really practice oddball all that much because people don't want to play it. Hunter JJX yeah. is in is in matchmaking, ending every Guardian oddball game before it starts, so you can't <laughs> play with them. Uh, and then it's just it's it's hard to do. So yep. um, with me, I just have never been very good at it. Uh, so I've been relying on my teammates a lot more on that on that uh, on that map uh, than than other than other um, other game types. And it, it was difficult, but us slaying out. We can do that well, but our, our our thing is that we get our setups broken pretty easily. Yeah. But if we fo if we focus more on scrapping time, then it can it can really help us, and that's what we what we did a couple times in scrims versus, uh, it was it was like half ducks, half yeens or something. I can't remember exactly yeah. what the team was. I just remember there were some ducks there in the scrim. Uh, there's always ducks around. So there's always <laughs> Trajan and slow mo. Shout yeah. out to them. They've helped us so much, especially especially later in the season. Um, because. Because uh, I am, I am inflammatory, uh, <laughs> in, in in some ways in terms of my trash talk and attitude a little bit. I try to I try to keep it light, but hey, it happens sometimes. Absolutely. But um, it, on Guardian Oddball, us being a little bit more uh, scrappy has helped us because we used to be getting destroyed, and then we took a couple. Um, yeah. But I think on the the key the key thing for Guardian Oddball was early we were able to force a blue setup, and that got us half our points right there. But at the end, they did. They tried an early setup, or they tried a blue setup. Luckily for them, nobody spawned there. But I said in, in comms, if we kill them in blue, we're going to win the game. Yep. And I think it was Serp, maybe Fearless, uh, one of the two, got into blue, got the kill, and they immediately got the ball. And I just started chucking the, the 15 nades that were already in blue to window. And I got like three or four kills doing just yeah. that. Yeah. And there was nothing they could do because that's so hard to break in a quick amount of time. And that really, that really carried us for, uh, for that. And that was, um, that was a, that was a huge bounce back. I think narrows was probably the most important game for our mental, our, our, our mental. Our mental yes. Cause I was saying, yeah. I was saying, uh, after the second game, I was a little worried on heretic. Uh, afterwards I was like, okay, we made mistakes, <laughs> but we were, I think, I think we were overall, doing well it's not like we were gonna we we're gonna uh we were gonna be super clean all the time but as soon as narrows came out and we started strong we had like a 10 kill lead i was yeah. I, I i was fine i was happy and then going into game three i was like guys we expected to be either one one or two zero to start but we wanted it we we were basically pretty much sure at least i was mentally it was going to start off two one yeah i was expecting to lose one of those three almost certainly Gu guardian oddball but us, us taking it, taking it in, uh, in the end, uh, was really, really good for our, our mental, and we we carried that through. Just being able to focus on our shots, and eventually coming back with the teamwork on the end of Construct Hill. Yeah, so for I was sure. Very happy. It was definitely great watching you guys build off of that momentum. I think it gave you confidence to push through. You guys slayed really well all series long and you just played to that strength throughout this question is for both serp and uh legend uh you know both of you just kind of give me your thoughts on it as original members of you know the lionheart white squad and being a part of that when it kind of faded away but then transitioning into this reality check squad talk me through what it's been like to kind of get to grow together with some of these new guys at the midway point i know people will get busy schedules so you don't you know it, it's not what it started out as but you know you guys ultimately turn into champions i know you get coming getting to come back around in the coaching role towards the end there legend it's fantastic to see you come back around talk me through what these last couple of weeks have been like here as members of reality check and now as the champions of the championship division oh, you go oh, let's restart no, oh, okay. go ahead and start okay. that. well in the beginning uh you know i met i met these guys um through sparks and serpex and then you know fear was a he was along the ride with me and then we practiced a little bit in the very beginning. And it seems like we did really good in those um, in that first series that we played this year, and then the second series it kind of fell apart. Um, there was just a lot of mistakes. Just basically, I don't. I think it came down to just not a lot of team practice, and um, that's ultimately, you know, what happened. Kind of with the the Lion White, uh, Lionheart White White team, we had one player that wasn't getting on nearly as much, and uh, I usually play Halo Five, so I'm not on MCC as much, but. 
Uh, I just came Blasphemy, back. Blasphemy, my man. No, I'm just kidding. I'm <laughs> out of here. Trying to get that armor, man. But anyway, <laughs> <it's all smiling. laughs> Anyways, uh, fear I just want to point out he's on Halo 5 right now. Yeah, just, I was about to say. I just yeah, want that. Currently it's currently destroying. It's all in the fuck. You know, getting the chance. He's trying to get to 152 to get that sweet, sweet armor. But anyway. <laughs> yeah, man, I came back last week uh, to coach these guys. They they wanted me to coach. I was down more than down to play uh, the rest of the season, but um, you know they found these two great guys to fill in, and uh, seems like they've had a lot of uh, experience in the competitive world. So they were just a great fit overall. And I watched them the first time they played. I was like, man, these dudes are pretty damn good, you know. And uh, here we are. We're winning the championship. Um, you know, I was just doing my job tonight, calling out the timers for them like they wanted, and uh, ultimately we were able to get most of those customs and and the power ups. And I think those yeah. little bitty times during the match are what really set it apart and what allowed them to come back in that construct game because that was a rough game. That was a rough Absolutely. game. Absolutely. Can I can I can I uh, jump off that one thing? So yeah. against the Ducks, construct hill. I think it. I can't. Remember, I think it was the last game. Somebody can confirm. <laughs> maybe Trajan in the um in the chat. Uh, it was the exact same scenario we had this game uh, on construct hill. We were uh we were down by like ten points, last minute of the game, and at this point I was the one that was calling out custom timers in the hill. I fucking forgot. <laughs> I straight up was just calling out. Get in hill. Let's go. We get this. Hill moves up to close and we lose. And we're sitting there Shaw, trying not to Shaw. shoot myself. <laughs> All right, I'm, I'll, I'll jump in on one thing right there. Shaw, mi, mi, right there at the end, last 15 seconds of the game. Shaw, I'm dropping for custom. Shaw screaming his head off, trying to get me to come back oh, yeah. up. <laughs> yep. Yeah, because that, 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 that time. the yeah, the okay. timer because uh, we we had for like a couple days. I was trying to run YouTube timers. I even made a couple myself with the 30 minute game type. I was like, this is not working great. And I reached out to C4. I was like, yo, can you, can you help us out with coaching maybe? Just calling out timers. He's never done it before. And it still it helped out immensely. And I think it kind of showed in terms of our, our play, focusing on snipers and uh, custom and rockets. Because we usually, outside of like uh, maps that have our own snipers, we, we can struggle with uh, like timing construct sniper or um, guardian or whatever. Mm-hmm. Any neutral objectives we were struggling a little bit with, and I think with the coaching, it really elevated us a lot. So thank you again. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah no problem. Sure. Serpex, um, what do you got? Yeah, man. So, oh. Alrighty. So going off of the whole in- instance with Lionheart White, it it definitely was a, a a little hard at first because I was we weren't sure which route we were gonna go. There was a lot of back and forth between myself, C four and fearless kind of what the what the plan was so when c4 reached out to me saying that he had p- potentially two people to come in and fill fill a role it helped out a lot because it get, it took it basically gave that sigh of relief that i that i wasn't gonna have to be the one to go in and completely take us out of the league because yeah. had that not happened i i'm more than 100 percent sure we wouldn't be here for sure and we're thankful that you guys were able to put this team together because you guys gave us great shows all season long. It was a pleasure to watch you guys play tonight. It's been a pleasure to be with you guys throughout this league all season long. I can't think of a better team to be the representative of our championship league as champions. Congratulations. I know the money doesn't matter all that much to you, but you guys walk away with a check tonight. For five hundred dollars, we'll be getting with you guys about how to set up the payments and stuff like that, and then we're just gonna delete the Discord and disappear <laughs> off the face of the planet. <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, speaking no. of, oh, speaking, yeah. speaking yeah. of guys, we're all we're all really appreciative of how much yeah. effort because we know we know it's a lot. Uh, yeah. Especially Fearless has been working with you guys about some things. I know you got you guys go through a lot of stuff, mm-hmm. the casters, uh, all the all the design work, audio stuff. Everything. Mm-hmm. It's a bunch. Running the Discord is a nightmare. Yeah. So yeah. everything. Uh, all, all I have to say is shout out to What a Most for running a perfect show tonight. Yes, hey, you did a fantastic job. Not tonight. perfect, you but I appreciate that. Content. I mean, we're never perfect. We always like to leave a little bit of room for improvement. We gotta have because a that's just what we do here in the PHCO. But thank you guys so so much for joining us tonight. I'm gonna let you guys go ahead and take off. Enjoy the rest of your celebrations. 
We enjoyed having you. We're going to take the rest of the PHCL on a raid over to some small Halo streamer. We'll hope to see you guys hanging out in the chat tomorrow night as we finish off the season with the Open Championship and the Premier Championship. Uh, and, yeah, once again, congratulations and fantastic job this season, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah man. Thank you. Can't wait GG's for guys. Can't wait to see Absolutely. You guys. Can't wait to see this really place excited. succeed. Season Absolutely. three, baby. Oh. See you guys later. Have a good one. Right. Thank you. you yeah. See you guys. Bye, hey guys. <laughs> I love it. I love it. <laughs> had had to get it. Who can do it. it that well without like a voice? Uh, yeah, like a. Yeah, yeah. I honestly it thought it was a voice changer. Crazy. Yeah, the first time I heard him do it. Yeah. My goodness. It's crazy. But it's not a voice changer. It isn't because it's that good. Uh, and he's probably still listening and hearing us say good things about him. We can't have that. So, yeah. yeah you know, his ego's going to be way too <laughs> big right now. It's a really huge no, but I'm just All kidding. right, guys. These guys, if anybody deserves to have a big ego, it's these guys because they yep. are the champions. Reality check, season two PHCL champions. Invincible, anything you want to sign off with, my friend? Oh, man. I just want to say thank you guys so much for letting me come back, man. This is my second time or third time streaming now. I can't... Rookie streamer here. Anyway, so much but, fun uh, doing it. Just yeah, I, I have so much fun, dude. I get so excited about these games. Um, I I would have loved to have just have it a game nine though. You know, is that weird? <laughs> I just wanted it to last in like nine games. But uh, no, thank you guys so much. I mean, I'll love to do this in the future. I look forward to competing in the uh, PHCL for season three. And yeah, man, thank you guys so much. Zip, awesome, always pleasure man casting with you yep. i've casted with you twice yep. now tonzi mm -hmm. twice now what a must this is my first time casting with you but you know what hopefully we get to do more in the future yes sir For absolutely sure. it was an absolute pleasure my friend zip anything to sign off with my friend um i mean you know it, di it didn't disappoint you know i always come in uh every time to cast and and uh you know i'm wondering how you know how it, how the last week can be topped um, and it, I'm never disappointed. And so, you know, just great, great games to both of the teams. Um, great, you know, showing of skill. And uh, I look forward to next season, 100%. Me too, man. And it was a pleasure for me as well tonight. It's the second championship game I've gotten the privilege of casting. It was so much fun to cast the season one championship game between Eclipse and Mugwump Squad. And it's great to see people get excited about this community league, get excited about the PHCL. And it's the community that makes this place great. It's not the money. It's not the little perks like the merchandise store and stuff like that. It's all of you guys. And we are so happy we got to bring you such an exciting championship finale here for our championship division. And... I mean, I can't thank you guys enough for all the support in this division this season. Please, please, please tell your friends about tomorrow. Because if you thought tonight was exciting, we're going to have some crazy action tomorrow between our Open League division finalists, which are Oddballs and Semi-Stellar Blue. And I fully expect that series to go the distance. Our Open League guys have been working hard all season. The growth in these players has been amazing. And that's one of the best parts about the Open League, just how much better some of these newer players have gotten. And then we close out the season with the premier championship between Red Eyes and Get a Grip. And the best of the best in Halo 3 are going to be playing there. There are some top quality guys on both of those rosters. And I'm, and I'm not even really exaggerating. These guys are good players. These are tournament level players that are going to be playing tomorrow night. And I hope you guys come out and check it out. And I mean, fantastic job tonight, everybody. What a must. Why don't you sign us off? If you can take us to a, uh, if you can take us to a, uh, a stream, then do it. If not close us out, my friend. Absolutely. So as I just take care of some, uh, stuff in uh administration <laughs> just trying to get the uh so it looks like we'll be actually rating a little bit bigger of a streamer just so we can go send some love from the phcl uh Tons, before right. we before we get off though uh we, there's two channel point redemptions that we need to take care of you got a hat switch and oh, okay um, i'm going back to blue then i got a chest hair so <laughs> you definitely well there you go invincible first first stream of what am us first stream oh. seeing nips Ooh, nice. no nips just chest hair um, I, I really need to take that up for season three because it's <laughs> demeaning and humiliating. I've just Absolutely. been staring at his beard the whole time, honestly. Oh my goodness. Well, you see, the thing is, his chest hair is connected to his beard. Like, it's got like it. a whole... I feel so out of place. Though. Everybody's got such a nice thing going, and I'm just like, eat. Ah, uh, you got, you got <laughs> your own thing going on. But take us out of here. What of us? Close us out, my friend. 
Absolutely. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in to the Premier Halo Championship League. I have been one of us along with Invincible, Tonzi, and Zip. We had a great time and we hope you did too. We will see you all tomorrow here on the PHCL. In the meantime, let's go spread the love only the way the PHCL can. We're heading over to Walshy, ladies and gentlemen, the godfather of Halo in just a few seconds. Thanks for tuning in. Thank you for everyone who's followed, everyone who's uh, subbed or gifted subs. We really appreciate it. It, it. You keep us going. And we will see you all next time here on the Premier Halo Championship League. In the meantime, let's raid. Woo! Raid time, baby.